getting dicey. <laughs> Unmute. Forgot the cow, but that's okay. <laughs> it's all good. Height of the storm uh, ticked, so we can get some sounds going. Um, all right. So there's gonna. I need to have a few questions answered before we go into like what is happening. I know you guys said last week uh, you want to get a solid long rest in. That's eight hours of of resting without any disturbance. Yep. Um, so. Does that mean that if the skeletons see anything outside, they are not coming in to disturb you in the bubble? If I'll tell them if they come in, if it's too dangerous for them, if they come in, just come in and be quiet and have a nap. Okay. So you don't One want of them, them has to, to stay out. So you don't want them to defend anything. You just want them to like come inside. What's the? Why did we leave uh, them out there if they weren't going <laughs> to try and defend the horse and cart? What did we just? bring them in there well, well before we go to bed what do you guys think should they be defending or well can can all the skeletons even fit uh only four well i've got five so one has to stay outside i'd say the most senior um <laughs> what's his name the former mayor vishta yeah. oh no vargas vargas. vargas vargas yeah vargas uh he'll he has to stay and outside, but he's on the western side, <clears throat> hopefully where they're not coming from. And um, we've also got horses outside. How many? you got two horses. Two horses. Mm. <gasps> uh, I can leave them out to protect the horses, if you like. That's the plan. <laughs> well, I'm asking, if that's the plan? I think, so. I think that's a good plan. Okay. Right, yeah, but we don't want them to. We don't want them to wake us up. Yeah, it's quite quiet. But we do want them to beat wolves to death if they're yes. trying to <laughs> yeah. trying to attack the horses. Okay. And if it's a revenant, well, you've had a good oh, one. Twice. Okay. Yeah. So no matter the four what of happens, them have silver swords. Sure. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Which would be great uh, for werewolves, as as you well know. Um, so that that covers that. So the skeletons. They're not going to come in. They're not going to wake you up. They're just going to fight until they can no longer fight. If that is the case, yep. Yeah. The they second... can pass through the bubble. But if... that, like, okay, be... yeah. But they would just do it. I just tell them do it quietly. <laughs> so, so they're in a no. fight for their lives, and, and then, then go. They just to... start feeling like one hit point. I'm like, I'm just saying, if you have to go through the bubble. Tiptoe. Just don't wake us up. Like, if you're coming in... Yeah, don't sh- wake us up. We're, we've got some really grumpy customers in okay. here. Okay. <laughs> My next set of questions is more about the bubble itself. It is going to be opaque, so you can't see through it, and it's going to be soundproof, so you can't hear anything happening outside. Is that yeah. correct? I think I think we can definitely not see out of it. I don't know how complete the dampen- sound dampening is, but I imagine it, 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 you make it comfortable and everything in there so i don't imagine it's like fucking loud right I'd, I'd everything le- is sort of dulled at least i'm happy to let you decide on it because obviously this it could be the difference between you getting a long rest or not so it's kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah. If you our do- goal is a long rest okay okay secondly uh, thirdly i should say american you only need four hours of like meditation what are you going to be doing with the other four should you it be a completely uneventful um, eight hours. That's a good question. Well, Casimir's a full elf as well, right? Yes, yeah. So he'll be in the same boat as me. Mm-hmm. Um, but since the bubble's opaque, we'd have to go outside in the rain to um, see anything outside, that's, right? That's right, yeah, yeah. So... I don't really know if it's worth us sitting outside in the rain for hours just in case something happens mm. yeah if something so does we're probably happen, just... it'll wake us up yeah unless you wanted to be and out there with yeah. casimir alone right uh, and not waking up oh, the group oh. oh sorry and no... <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh. out in the <laughs> ice cold the rain together <laughs> in the bushes druid style <laughs> all right so the, re- the reason i am asking all of this is 
um, I did in my prep stream yesterday, I did do a lot of uh, rolling of dice to decide what might show up and when it might show up. So there are things that could be appearing throughout the night. If you are wanting a completely uninterrupted sleep within your bubble for eight hours, American, if you're just wanting to lock down inside that bubble for uh, the full eight hours, we can do that. And then once eight hours have passed, the bubble pops open uh, and you can see what is what is around you. Yep. Yeah, is that a, is that the consensus? <laughs> I think so. All right. Okay. So before we jump into that, you guys get uh, safe inside this this uh, Leoman's tiny hut, and you have a incredibly peaceful sleep. It's so comfortable as well. You can't hear anything other than maybe just light, sort of dampened sounds of rain on the top of the hut. Um, you can't see anything outside of it at all, uh, and you wake up. Um, maybe like five minutes before um, the bubble is about. You know, I think the Baron's got a really good uh, body clock for this kind of thing. He knows, uh, yep. and he yep. kind of wakes up five minutes before he knows this spell is, is going to go. We're going to start the session with, you guys made it through the night. That is a level up to you guys. You're at level, we're going to move you guys up to level nine. I like the way oh. he said you made it through the night. That's your level up. <laughs> we got the level up. <laughs> you did it. Like a yeah. baby. Like a helpless baby. Oh, you made it through the night. Well done. Well done. Um, we, we really only get we five minutes. Warning. Well, but you need to get... full eight hours of sleep. Well, you need to have an eight hours <laughs> to, to have a long rest, right? You need eight hours of resting to have a, the long rest. Yeah, yeah. And the spell no, no is, or is like Although eight hours. you can hours. have some interruptions and then go back. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can have like light talking and brushing your teeth and whatnot. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And if, even if you get interrupted a little bit, I think. Or you have to go to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. But you can't be like, um, can you check outside, do fight. some fighting, and just I'm just going to make sure this... Is yeah. Still here, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so who do we who do we want to start with, Joe? You're you're at my uh, you're at the right of me in the in the D and D overlay that we've got going on. Um, mm -hmm. Did we want to take a look at going up to level nine for you? <gasps> I guess. I think level nine is a pretty easy yeah. um, easyish level up for everyone. Um, so let's take a look. Yeah. I've got I've got the I've got D and D Beyond up at the moment oh nice did you want me to just sort of go through it and sort of let you know what was happening or did you did you want to look at yourself yeah you, and you talk go through it okay um your proficiency goes up to plus four you don't gain any cantrips but um your level four spell slot gains a spell slot uh and you get a level five spell slot so you'll have four level one three level two three level three three level four and one level five spell slot now um and i believe the other thing that you get thanks to the what was it the circle of circle of the forest oh circle of the land um forest uh forest forest okay you also get two more uh always prepared spells which is uh commune with nature and tree stride uh, Commute with Nature is pretty cool. Uh, basically, it's a fifth level spell that allows you to basically just ask nature around you some specific questions. So you can gain knowledge of up to three facts of your choice about any of the subjects relating to the area like terrain and body of water, uh, plants, minerals, animals or people, uh, celestials, phase, fiends, elementals or undead, uh, uh, influence from other planes of existence and if there are any buildings and that's within 300 feet of you so yeah there's one in there that's pretty good for you, your guys situation i guess which is checking to see if there's any um undead or elementals in yeah. the area yeah I'm like maybe i should use that as soon as i wake up but it'll probably be like i'm sensing them right outside <laughs> yeah right yeah yeah so yeah, maybe uh, yeah, yeah i don't think you need to cast that one quite yet um, but that's that's it. It's a bit of a simple level nine level up for you. Uh, any questions what's about tree it? stride? Oh, what's tree stride? That's uh, like um, you're able. To, oh, actually, I remember looking that one up and being like, "That's so cool!" Yes. It's like you can teleport from tree to trees. Uh, you can enter so you can, a tree. You like, can walk into a tree and jump back out a different one, right? 
Yeah, both That'd trees be must be living in at least the same size as you. And you, so use, cool. you use five feet of movement to enter it, and you instantly know the location of all other trees of the same kind within 500 feet. And as part of the move used to enter the tree, you can either pass into one of those trees or step out of the tree you're in. Uh, you appear in a spot of your choice within five feet of the destination tree using another five feet of movement. So you use five feet to get in and back out of the same tree if you want to just get out of that same tree, or ten feet of movement to get in one and out another. And that's so cool. that's pretty good. That's one action. There's a that's, lot of trees. It's a f yeah, there's a lot in here. You We're can, in the right place for me to show off my new spell. Yeah, so it basically gives you five to, to leave you all for dead. Yeah. <laughs> Um, any other questions for the level nine there, Joe? Um, no. Okay. I think it'll just passively bump up a few things for me, and yeah, nothing too special. Cool. Um, Baron, we'll move over to you as the wizard. Have you looked into what you get for level nine? I think I just get uh, a level six spell. Uh, level five spell? Oh, is it level 5? Yeah. Oh, it must be, yeah, level 5, damn it, because I've had level 4. And your um, proficiency goes up 1 as well. Does it? Yeah. So it becomes well, plus, plus 4 proficiency now. Is it plus 4? Yeah, plus 4. Um, oh, right, so they have to do a 17 save. That's pretty good. Um, is there anything for your arcane tradition? No. Uh, level 10 there is. I become inured to death. Which school Ooh. are you part of? Necromancy. Oh, yeah, of, I mean, of course. What was I thinking? Um, uh, level, six, yeah, level 10, cool. Okay, so that's, again, a very simple and small upgrade, but a decent one with uh, that proficiency yeah. bonus. Level 5 spell, yeah, that's and a level, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. What does that mean for your um, animate dead? Does that mean you're going to have another seven zombies following you around? True, I could cast it at a higher level because because I'm a necromancer, I get two extra ones uh, when I recast it and things like that. Ah, so cool. It's more efficient to animate dead, but I don't know if that really is affected with level five. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, next up, oh, sorry, any questions about yours? Or is it, that's pretty straightforward. No, I just got to, the hard part is picking two spells. Is this the point where you pick the spells, is it? Yeah. All right, cool. Feel free to take a look while we sort of go over with, uh, like, okay. John and Adam as well, because you might find some spells that are good for your current situation um, or for yes. wherever it is you're about to go next. Uh, John, with, with uh, Bill, the bard, have you had a look at what you get for level nine? I have. So much the same as the other casters, I uh, gain a level 5 spell slot. Mm -hmm. um, so some of my spells I can use at level 5. Um, Bards, this is the only time on level up is the only time we can swap spells. Ah, right. Um, so I can unlearn a spell and learn a new spell. I don't get to do that when we rest. Uh, so I think I'm going to do that. Cool. And I we obviously get some more hit points, so I'm just taking the average... Oh yeah, so hit points for the others as well. Points. Don't forget to upgrade your hit points. Um, you also get um, and my proficiency goes up, which makes perfect, perfect. Which makes my spell save what DC are your hit points? sixty-six. Ooh. That's pretty strong. You also, I don't know if you noticed this, you get Song of Rest as well. Oh yeah, I do get Song of Rest D ten. Uh, we haven't had a lot of no, short no, rests. a one D eight. It goes up from a 1d6 uh, up to a 1d8. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's good. And Sweet. with your with your bard college, have you got which bard college you were part of? Lore. Uh, I'm just having a quick check. Nothing there by the looks of things. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, I forgot. Obviously. HP, if you guys have been using the average previously, use the average again. If you've been rolling to upgrade your HP, roll again for sure. Uh, but try and stay consistent. Uh, lastly, Morley, the rogue. Um, Adam, have you had a look at what is going on for rogue at level 9? Uh, I think I think so. It's not it's not a heat. 
um, against something called Magical Ambush. Okay. Do you, you know about this? I don't. You don't know about Magical Ambush? <laughs> Please, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like oh, wow. this. Do you know what magic is? It's uh, And then what an ambush is? It's kind of like that. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, <laughs> so, this is annoying. I, I had Magical Ambush up before, and now it's not. Tell me what it was. That's all right. So, ironically, now I also don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, your proficiency, <laughs> your proficiency goes up to plus four. Your um, sneak attack gains another d6, so it's a five mm. d6 on your sneak attack now. Yeah. Which is yeah. huge. Um, How much? Five d6 on sneak attack. <laughs> yeah. You should be doing that every yeah. round, Adam. Every round. Oh, look. Oh, hey. You, you, you don't think I'm trying? <laughs> you don't think I, I think oh, I'd love to get those extra damage points in? You think I'm just leaving them on the table? Yeah, yeah. he does. But yeah. do, do you get to like hide every round as well? Yeah, isn't that? Yeah, you do. It's a, it's a bonus action, I think. Mm, yeah, it is. But there needs to be places to yeah. hide. You can't just go. I use hide and stay on the spot. You can, it's not. That's where mold I, earth comes in. Like you can't Hell see yeah! <laughs> I realised last time that what I should have done is when the um, when the revenants were attacking us by the church after I'd shot out my my three scorching rays, I should have been hidden behind like a a bush. Yeah, or duck behind or the corner something. of the church. Or yeah, yeah. try yeah. try and use that every time if you can, for sure. So I'm looking at magical ambush. Uh, it says yeah. if you are hidden from a creature when you cast a spell on it, the creature has disadvantage on any saving throw it makes against the spell that turn. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Pretty Ev. That's pretty good. Eh. <laughs> no? <laughs> it depends on the spells, okay. I guess. As long as if yeah, you, it's okay. Yeah. If you're using ones that you have to roll to hit, then it doesn't really help. You have to yeah. it's more about the saving throws, right? Yeah. Um and, and I'm swapping out one spell. Okay, cool. It's, it's not gonna be too exciting. I'm just gonna I'm gonna look at that at off offline. Okay. Take the state that offline. Uh. Uh, how I've got s- whoever's whoever isn't finished doing their level up like talk about what you're doing just so we can move forward uh, while doing it we can help I've got so many new spells to choose from and I'm just like no oh, right. more spells <laughs> more of them they just keep coming so you unlock all druid level 5 spells right and you can pick one yeah. to, to chuck on yeah. your list to prepare yeah. for the day. So I'm like, oh man, which of these would be good? Have you Wait, got like a... a few, oh, there's or? some really trippy ones. Well, she can only prepare one? Or can you prepare more yeah. than one, Joe? I can... Oh. I don't know. I just do what D&D Beyond tells me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your trippy ones? You, you, got can, like you can prepare series. as many as you want. This is a cool one. Um... You can. Druid. I could conceivably turn this place into a Disney movie by making um, trees and such to become animated. They probably don't get faces on them, but I'd like to imagine they would. Little gloves. Yeah, I would like that. How about combining that with hallucinatory terrain and having an extended song and dance sequence for everyone? Musical episode. I reckon we could do that for sure. Oh God! Is <laughs> <laughs> hallucinatory terrain a, a spell? That sounds good. Yeah, I think Bill has that one. I think Bill might have used that. Really? I'm not sure. I have anime objects. Mm, mm, no, but not hallucinatory. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I I haven't tried hallucinations. I, I don't have hallucinations. Oh, you've got hallucinations. something else hallucination, right? He got into the, one of the um, hag's heads at one point, but I don't know if it was hallucinating. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Who, well, that Morley was, like, was the one that I've made not a, I've not a, I've not a pattern. I've got a few things that are a bit like that, but not the terrain mm. one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've got some pretty wild spells to choose from. Do you need a moment before we, we kick off into the next bit of the campaign? Well, nah. I'll just pick one at random. <laughs> All right, just keep it open, and oh, if I you see one that looks one. good for whatever happens this session, then that's the one you've picked, right? There's <laughs> one called... <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. It sounds good, right? You, you say what? You're in a spot of bother, and you want to just kind of... 
completely game the system, didn't you? Just do it. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> the question yeah. is yeah. Strad a person or a monster? Uh, he probably thinks it's both. Uh, people definitely <laughs> think of him as a monster, that's for sure. He, he's... All right, because there's whole person and there's whole monster. I think he'd be a person, right? Because I think he's a person. Whole person is for humanoid shapes, is it? right? I mean, he's a he's an. I think that's in the spell description. It says a humanoid. Yeah, he's he's. I can't. I can't say. I can't. I can't say. No, I can't say it's, what he is. It says choose a humanoid that you can see within range. He's definitely right. a humanoid. He's a humanoid. That's he the can sword. be humanoid. Yeah. Okay, so well, if he turns into a bat. Then it wouldn't. <laughs> might be whole yeah. monster. Yeah, so it depends. Might be whole if he's missed, you yeah. need whole he turns mist. Into a bat, he wins. He wins credit. Yeah. <laughs> I can get gas. Yeah, I can get gas as well. I was laughing is, at the I've name to myself. Gas is really good, right? But yes. Evil. I wouldn't get it though. I mean, you're basically controlling a person for thirty days. Well, they if they try and do what oh yeah yeah the opposite of what you say then they take five d ten psychic damage. I was umming and ahhing about having an NPC use it on Loris at one point, but I didn't. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would be pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, yes. Thirty days. Yeah, yeah. My gosh. Some yeah, there's some good spells yeah. in level five. Oh my God, I've got some necromancy types sounding oh. shit on here, like reincarnate. Oh, I don't have that. What is it? Oh. What does that do? It's crazy. Does that bring someone it back to life? That is a different thing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh my god, that's cool. But it's random, isn't it? Yeah, you have to roll to see what they re get reincarnated as. That's pretty cool. Well, Here's... we're getting some powerful stuff now. Yeah, you guys Here's are but... getting very powerful. Here's the thing, though. A lot yeah. of my cool spells cost a lot. This one costs a thousand GP. But is that consumed in the? Oh yes. I think we're just playing. It is. It's consumed. Oh, it's reincarnate. Yeah. It's bringing something yeah, back to yeah. life. Yeah, that makes yeah. Sense. I'm like, never mind. We're poor. That's why. That's why None Bill that. has his diamond. I believe he's like, yeah. he's treasuring yeah. that diamond. Oh okay, man, so... all my cool ones are expensive. Mm-hmm. If you. How can a druid get rich? Come on. True. I mean, they they're... don't even like metal. Yeah. <laughs> um, Grave digger. I uh, so I remember back at the very start where Bill's dream, and we were basically this level, I think, or well, maybe level ten, and we picked spells. I'm thinking, should I pick that same spell, <laughs> the anime spell where steel, wind, strike, and you That's teleport right. and ching, ching, ching. I mean, it was prophetic. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe, may well, we may have been prophetic. Or there's another one called like um, not sunlight. It's a big old. It's, I just wonder if it's too close to my radiant, sickening radiance. Mm. Does what? It, oh, I'll find it. Okay. Well, uh, are you guys ready for the um, five minute countdown before the bubble disappears? Uh, yeah, I guess. No. Okay. <laughs> well, too bad. Uh, the Baron I've, is. I've got a great spell. I know. I know the spell I'm going to use. Okay, now it's, and it's it's I, yeah I can't believe no I'm not going to use a spell now but I can I check with uh, I guess this is kind of out again because I feel like mm -hmm. one of the more um, proficient magic users would have thought of this before. How come no one ever used suggestion to get Perry Wimple to come with us, or to get the uncle to be like? But it doesn't last long, does it? Well, once he's given, he signed it away. He's not going to come with us. <laughs> it's going on the hours. Going to refund. <laughs> A good, good Go question though. Barry Wimble. Um, I did, I did think, I did think about that, but it felt, uh, it felt wrong. <laughs> and we we're still trying to be good. Back then. <laughs> <laughs> we were still trying to be good back then. Before Barovia hardened us into the yeah. scum that we've become. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a question. Maybe uh, if I can get some advice from the, anyone typing in the thing. Dawn, the fifth level spell, Dawn, or Steel Wind Strike. What's um? What's Dawn? What does Dawn do? Dawn is similar to Sickening Radiance. 
uh, the light of dawn shines down on a location you specify within range and until the spell ends a 30 foot radius 40 foot high cylinder of bright light glimmers there as light as sunlight oh it is sunlight when the, cil- <laughs> when the cylinder appears each creature in it must take a constitution saving throw or do 4d10 radiant damage or half as much and uh, a creature must also make the saving throw whenever it ends its turn in the cylinder and if I'm within 60 feet of the cylinder, I can Can't move it 60 prepare... feet. What was that can you just prepare different spells each day? Yeah, but I can, can only can't pick the Baron two. just prepare different spells each day? I can't just I can't just pick from any of the spells. I have to, when I level up, I get to pick a, a couple. Mm. He doesn't have free reign of all the spells like like Murican has. Um, it's a curse. It is. Yeah. For both oh, of you, well. like Joe's, like I hate all these spells, <laughs> and Shannon's like no, I, I don't hate spells. them. I'm just overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. There's yeah, just a lot. I might pick in a minute. Yep, that's that's fine. I mean, yeah, Steel Wind was pretty cool because that was like just darting everywhere, damaging everything that you're moving past, right? Yeah, you teleport next to uh, up to five creatures yeah, and yeah. hit them. That was amazing. What mm, we know anime, of the Baron, the most anime. What we know of the Baron now, I'm like, I can't see him being eager to do that move unless he's had some of Barovian blow beforehand. That could be what he <laughs> consumes to to trigger the move. I do seem to teleport quite a lot. So that's true. That's a good point. Um, Baron, you're oh, the wow. first. You're the first to wake up, um, and it is still pouring down. Uh, you can hear still just the the gentle drumming of the rain on the top of um, the hut. But you wake up with like a, a feeling that it's only a few minutes before this bubble is likely to um, fade away. Mm. Okay, I'm just going to gently wake everyone up. Hey guys, <laughs> hey, this, this is the morning. The for gentleness. <laughs> this is the morning wake up. We've got about hey. five minutes. Oh. oh my god, I could have done with another hour there, Barry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, is there anything you How guys? Your you? <laughs> yeah, house bill. You okay. He's muted. Fast asleep. <laughs> He's sleeping. Bill, why can't I? Shh. Okay. Okay. Good. Why, guys? All right. Um. So I rolled this two sessions ago, thinking that I was going to get a long rest. But I rolled two sessions ago that American was going to wake up in a winter mood. Okay. And we finally got that long rest. <laughs> so she wakes up on the wrong side of the of the the hovel. It was the wrong side. Heart bubble. Time. What, what, what? Is, what is the good mood? What is the mood we want you in? What is the good one? I'm struggling to. <laughs> Autumn and spring are the kinder moods. Uh, they're the less extreme, I guess. Uh, I'm going to make the bubble transparent. Oh, nice move. <gasps> nice move, actually. That's great. We, let's put you onto a, a, a little special map that I've, I have threw together. Special map? Yeah. Is it just blood and gore? <laughs> kind, <laughs> like, kind of? It kind of Ooh. is. Um, you, oh, wow. you bring uh, just to like a half transparency, right? So you can sort of see through. Um, and over to the west where your horses were and the skeletons were, you've still got two skeletons standing proudly, but they're looking, um, one of them is looking pretty damaged. The other one is looking just fine. Um, and they've got, uh, a couple of dead wolves in front of them. Um, unfortunately you've also got a couple of dead horses lying um, on the ground between the skeletons and the trench. You can see in the trench that a large chunk of it has collapsed. Um, so it looks like, from your position, it looks like something could be in that in, in the trench off to the west. Um, and you bring the audio... Bring the audio up. You, bring, uh, you allow sound in a bit more as well. Um, oh, yeah. And you can hear just like ferocious barking um, and howling coming from um that trench um you continue looking around and over to the uh east there's two uh, two revenants like just standing up against the the bubble with these two skeletons um dead at their feet or three skeletons dead at their feet 
It looks yeah. like the trench has been triggered as well. It looks like uh, there was a possibility of something falling down it, and you can see that there are claw marks near the edge of the trench. Um, and a lot of their armor looks to have been scratched up by like sword strikes, but these two revenants, you know that they regenerate. You don't know how long they've been out there for, but they look fine. Oh, that's right. They regenerate. Yeah. Well, our we horses are dead. <laughs> we had a redo on this? last week. On all of last week. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, Molly, Molly gives up and kills him. Well, this sort of thought. I think that's fair. Um, on the on the bright side, they weren't going to be able to make it up uh, Mount Guckies anyway. So. Thanks, Frank. Well, always. <laughs> <laughs> Silver, Silver, side. Silver lining and all that, I guess. It's the best uh, that they died now. <laughs> 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 Thank you for that. Uh, Casimir, <laughs> Ca Casimir is a little freaked out by the, the undeads, like uh, <laughs> scraping their swords down the edge of this bubble, like trying fervently to get in. Um, and he, he's... So, he backs himself sort of uh, to the other side of the, the bubble with a hut. While well, there's still time, I suggest that you all uh, start getting a, a run for it. Or maybe Merrick and I hate to ask again, but maybe you can become a, a, a horse, American, and pull the, pull the, um, the cart. And I can stay in here for a little while once you... Once you get uh, on, move on, I'll chase after you. But this is blocking their way, I think, at the moment. Yeah, but it's only going to be there for another couple of minutes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've said it before, but I shan't become your pack animal. It okay. does not befit an elf of my stature, so I have prepared a spell. I oh. can conjure fae spirits in the form of horses to carry us. Okay. Fantastic. And I shall. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's amazing, American. I'm going to do that. Fae spirits. But so, you have to leave the bubble to do it. I am a bit scared of, like, there might be still wolves out there, but I'll pop my nose out and see what's happening on the on the on that side. Cool if you could just do it with your nose. Like, your nose emerges. <laughs> I believe I'm going to say you have to be outside of the walls. You can't be with any part yeah. of you within yeah, this. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop out. Okay. What do I see? Um, you see pretty much exactly what you saw before. You're seeing uh, the trench uh, that has given away that with all the plant growth over and around it. Um, you're seeing every now and then you're, you're hearing obviously there's these, this howling and growling coming from the pits every now and then you see something trying to jump up and trying its best to try and get out only for it to slump down back into the pit that pit being this, about yeah. 10 feet deep and how wide is it i just want to know if it's jumpable or if we it's, have to try and like if i have to mold earth back over it it's five foot um five foot wide so you could easily jump up. okay so an easy jump yeah Okay. Mm, I feel bad for the wolves, but I'm not going to waste time on them. I'm going to, I'm going to jump over, and I'm going to um, call upon the spirits of nature and um, conjure up some horses and to get us going. Okay. The moment you step out of the the, the hut, <gasps> I die. The, the the rest of you, <laughs> see, <laughs> the rest of you see um, one of the revenants uh, maintaining focus on the hut. Um, and even though you know it really can't see you as you've only made the inside transparent, um, Bill, you can still, it feels like he knows exactly where you are in this hut. Everywhere you move, he seems to be tracking you. Uh, it seems pretty, it's, it makes you feel very uneasy. And, um, the rest of you, you see one of the other revenants almost give up on the, the side of the hut and try and start hacking away and pushing and trying to get his knife into the where the trees are, trying to cut his way in and give up and reluctantly try and slash away back at the hut 
he seems to be getting a bit more agitated the further Murican gets from the heart. That one's after you, American. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm calling upon the spirit of nature. Come here, my call. I'm going to challenge, get a challenge rating of half or lower for four beasts. And we're going to um, get some four beasts in there. Um, so actually, that gives us four war horses, mm -hmm. which is pretty neat. We'll be speeding Wait, along. Uh, how was the CR rating of a war horse? Half. Oh, that's right. They didn't have much in the way of um, hit points, yeah. did they? Yeah, their hit points and armor class aren't amazing, but they're very fast. With how... More of a name war than actual. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you may remember that when you were a war horse, you definitely did not need three more uh, alongside you, especially due to their size. Um, oh, okay. Well, it, shoot. It could easily pick up. Uh, and, and control that carriage by itself. It's good though, having four. You could, you could absolutely, I could, yeah. yeah. I mean, I could, I could summon eight ponies instead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, what do we want, guys? We could, Whatever we you could need. Ride, we could ride the extra horses. What? That's a good point. You could ride the we extra horses. That's true. Horses. That's true. Okay, so there is definitely limited space in this like area, but we can, the driving the car. we can uh, absolutely make a line of war horses up here. Okay. They're huge. They are enormous. Ten feet across. They, and they're, the parts of them are actually scraping past uh, branches and trees uh, due to their size. Like they, they are taking up the full width of the path. <sighs> so... So stressed. To get past guys, these we right have to now, get out of here. To get past these guys right now would be basically impossible. What do they look like? Are they glowing? It just says they're fae spirits that take the form of beasts. So I'm going to say that they're, they're a little bit glowing. A little bit ethereal. A little bit shimmery. A little bit ethereal. They look like the ghosts out of Ghostbusters. <laughs> okay. Like no, slime. they all look like Slimer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've already had Slimer on this. <laughs> I just mean they're a little bit see-through. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I've seen pictures where they're like, like the their, their ears are kind of almost leafy kind of style as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Druidy. You don't have to have that. Okay, Americans, yeah. Americans stressing out and like calling on everyone to move. Yeah, get out of this hut, guys. Right. Do, do we grab a war horse or do we jump in the wagon or what do we do? How long How long does that spell take to cast uh, American? Um, it takes uh, one action. Okay. And it's a concentration spell that lasts only one hour. Okay, cool. All right. So you've got these horses for, for at least an hour unless American wants to cast it again at some point. One of the war horses instinctively uh, picks the bit up um, that has been previously in American's mouth and uh, connects basically <laughs> enable, basically connects this carriage uh, behind it on the other side of this uh, trench that's been broken down. What? I'm, uh, I'm going to get my remaining skeletons, the two Florence and Winona, to come into the bubble. Okay. And try and grab Matt and Patty's body and drag them into the bu bubble as well and then i want them to run so you want them to follow the horses so what you want them to go and try and get the other skeletons well, it looks like they're right dead up against the um bubble so the, if they can the revenants and grab are them. like right there so there will be attacks like the, the revenants okay. are standing over the bodies of these skeletons one of the skeletons is behind the revenants yeah so what we might do, okay, what we'll do, I think it'd be a good time to uh, roll initiative. Okay, I think so. Fourteen. Okay. What 
happened? A bunny did something. Oh, what happened? I just heard a loud noise. I don't know. <laughs> There's just one sitting in the cage looking innocent. Um, <laughs> all right, how's everyone's mm -hmm. rolls going? I haven't heard anyone calling out oh, there. I got a 21. Okay, we got everybody? Um, Casimir, yep, 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 I yep. Six. I can't believe we haven't come up with some kind of derogatory nickname for Casimir yet. I, I, I feel like maybe we're losing our touch. I don't want one. I don't. Yeah, I, I think that would be <laughs> unkind to see a Casimir. Oh, he's the one one NPC we're going to yeah. treat well. Got it. Got it got I would got never it, call it. him Asmir. Okay. All <laughs> yeah. right, there it is. Uh, we never did have that um, farting roll for farts that we were talking about. <laughs> oh, I draw the line. Imagine if, imagine if he failed his fart roll and became ass smear. Come on. I'm turning off Come the stream. On. I'm quitting. He gets to roll the one. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Let's have a look. At the top of the order, we've got uh, the wolves who we're going to ignore as they're just going to spend their turn. Um, very, They're almost exhausted trying to uh, jump in and try and get their way out of this um, trench at this point. So let's go to the Baron. Baron and the skeletons. Okay, so do I know how much damage those guys hit for? We've hit fought them a couple of times now. Um, yeah, I mean... I, Can they do yeah, twenty damage? I'd say you might. Hit? I'd say you might have to go by your memory instead of like me just giving you a figure, right? <laughs> you might have to know. ask. You might have to role play and ask the characters a bit about. Do you think that they could hit them for twenty in one hit, guys? <laughs> yes. I don't know what you're talking. Well, even twenty. Twenty <laughs> what? Twenty. Twenty <laughs> fucking wax. You're talking 20 about fucking wax. Or well, fucking forget it then. One nine and four and start running. <laughs> They're going to run um, full tilt up, chasing after those majestic horses. Oh, they're just, Sorry, they're, Matt, Patty, and Vargas. They're not even going to try. They're just running. They're going to run and jump. Well, and... apparently, like, they would just get killed. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. You'd, Winona and Florence uh, just take off after the, uh, the horses and effortlessly jump over this trench. Uh, and, and clamber up onto the into the carriage. What oh, about? No, they're going to run alongside. The oh, carriage. Gonna, I don't want them to slow it down. They they're, can, they're not going to be able to fit sprint. at the moment next to like uh, the horses, but they, yeah, they can position themselves next to the carriage. Okay. Cool. And I'm going to wait until everyone else is out of this bubble because as soon as I leave it, it disappears. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, we'll come back to you. The Revenants are just going to spend their time, again, just tirelessly slashing at this, uh, this bubble. Um, the bubble, by the way, it is, it's easily been five minutes worth of time. At the end of this round, that bubble is coming down. Okay. Um, bubble boy. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Casimir's turn, who, who looks back to the Revenants coming through, and he, he positions himself... Um, sort of near the front of this bubble and he he's he's holding uh just his hand over a dagger at his side but there is like a level of confidence to this this dwarf um and he he is what? Is a dwarf oh sorry this, this <laughs> sorry this is elf. Uh, i was thinking dawn <laughs> i was thinking like dusk elf and it came out with uh dwarf it's <laughs> dusk elf <laughs> Well, so um, I, I'm, I'm going to just urge him, get out of here, get it, run, save your life, Casimir. Um, can you roll me a persuasion roll? Uh, okay, I can give it a go. Here we go. Persuasion. I got a plus five. I probably got more than that because it's not that much. It's uh, 22 total. All right, you yeah, you do manage to convince him. He looks at you, and you can see like there's a fire in his eyes of like really wanting to uh, fight these things that are that are outside. You can see he was ready to do something, prepare mm. something, um, but he he gives you a nod and runs out after uh, Mirkin and these these skeletons. Um, leaps over, uh, we'll say he gets to just in front of this trench. 
I'm just going to get rid of some of these dead things. Uh, cool. So that's Casimir's move. Uh, Morley, over to you. Right. We're just running, right? We're running for the carriage. That's what we're Go doing. Go for it. Get out of Molly. here. Molly runs for the carriage. Um, pausing only to... Should I set these wolves on fire and put them out of their misery? Or... <laughs> Should I just leave them be? They've got other wolves coming with ropes. I'm sure they'll be fine. They live there now. <sighs> what a relief. <laughs> Uh, I just feel it's a bit cruel, but I'll just ignore that. And look, you, look, you do you do get an action. I mean, by all means, if you want to just like leap over and just throw some fire down or something, like it, that feels bad as well. <laughs> it does feel bad. It does feel really what, bad. Just, like, can we just, we just have a head cannon them, that like, they scramble out head. eventually? <laughs> okay, all right. I just jump off their head like Super Mario. <laughs> Perhaps after, long after we've gone, they then figure out the six kids in the trench coat trick. And they'll stand on each other's shoulders. Yeah. And oh. Yeah. I feel like right, they could yeah, dig yeah. their way out of a trench eventually on an upwards incline. Yeah. You know? I just rolled for it, and they dig know, your way. They out. know how to do that. That's fine. They'll they'll be able to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just as they starve to death, but they always. Um, <laughs> they figure it out in like this delirious moment of starvation. <laughs> oh. Molly's in the carriage. Molly's in the carriage. Eating. <laughs> uh, okay, Molly. Great, American. <laughs> My turn already. Your turn already. I'm still waiting for everyone else to get in the um, in the carriage, and the bubbles already disappeared. No, the bubbles are about or, to no. disappear at the end of this Byron's round. Byron's still still there. Can you refresh us on the rules? Can spells go through it? They can't, right? No, they can go over it. Okay. Um, you just can't be in the bubble when you do it. That's all. Mm. Okay. Oh, God. I'm going to prepare a spell for when the bubble disappears. Okay. Okay, that's, yeah, totally fine. That's both you and Baron readying something. Uh, yeah. Um, and I, I'm going to be like... No, oh? go. go. I'm just going to say to Morley, I'm going to try to hold them back. <laughs> he's he's, just, he's just sitting in the back of the carriage. <laughs> he's yeah, like, when's you'll, lunch? <laughs> you get him. <laughs> Can I murder these wolves? Um, so you're reading a spell. What? So you, you uh, what spell level are you reading? Don't tell me the spell. Keep um, that a nice secret. Okay, um, I'm gonna ready a level three okay. spell. So just remember, if uh, for any reason you change your mind, that spell slot is burnt, whether you cast it or not. Because yeah. you've readied it. Uh, the same with you, Barry. Were you readying a spell, or were you... No. Okay, cool. There's just... no point, because I'm in the bubble. Cool. Cool, cool. Uh, Bill, your turn. Bill is going to run away. <laughs> okay. Um, I, jo I join Morley. Perfect. You two just... Not even stopping to think about the starving dogs. <laughs> Not even a thought. Not even a thought <laughs> in your mind about them. You burst Heartless. through the wall of the hut and you feel the rain just hit your face uh, and you start taking in like the wet ground and the, the dead horses, um, the pit and the plant growth, and you leap over and see these tired, uh, damaged wolves as well as you land on the other side and get into the carriage. Um... All right, it is the end of that round, and the bubble is about to go, but we're going to give... Baron wanted to delay his turn, so it's still the first round, still. So you still get a move before this, if uh, unless you want to delay it until the bubble oh, it comes down. doesn't go at the end of my turn, or...? At the end of your turn, the bubble will be gone. Okay. Yeah. So is it their turn, or my turn? Uh, it's your turn. It's your turn from the first round, still. Oh, Okay. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to dispel the bubble. Let's turn it off. Okay. I guess I get hit by the rain. I yep. was going to say this is the last time I go glamping in Barovia. <laughs> and I'm going to run over. James Bond, Black Lime. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I go camping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I needed a bit of delivery like that. Last time I go glamping. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to put my... <laughs> I'm going to put my hand on Patty, the dead skeleton. Okay. Patty, we're getting out of here. 
and I'm going to explode in a teleportation um, explosion. Ah, I always forget about that. That's gross. Like, what are you setting yourself up for? Uh, whatever that's called. Uh, yeah, and uh, that, that has a tent. So hopefully I'm within 10 feet of these guys, all right? So I'm going to make sure I'm within 10 feet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And me and sure. Paddy are going to disappear. It's going to thunderously explode and will appear on the top of the, um, the, the cart. Okay, cool. The top as well. What a baller. <laughs> like Batman, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Just like Batman. Let's go, Batman. Uh, yeah, great. Like you, you sort of just head towards it, and the revenants raise their swords like in tandem. Um, and you just, what, what does that look like? What does that explosion kind of look like to anyone who's watching? Uh, probably, we just we disappear, and all the air and everything that is di- gone just sort of implodes, boom, and then explodes outwards called thunderstep there's like a moment where there's like no rain over the revenants before the rain that you've pushed away and the rain that was naturally coming down just pours back down over them and filling that void that you just left in front of them and just boom explodes and uh you can hear the thunder up to 300 feet away oh wow so they have to make uh constitution 17 saving throws uh saving throws constitution Let's have a quick look here. Oh, it's gone up as well because of your proficiency. Nice. Good time to get that done. Oh, yes. Uh, one of them rolls a 17. The other one rolls a 14. Okay. Yeah, so uh, one of them 3D, saves. 10 damage. One of them takes half. Uh, 10, 6, 6, 22. Okay, cool. Uh, and half damage for one. Is that right? Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, great. Yeah, they're kind of like... Do they go prone or anything, or is it just like just, just that damage, just that force? Uh, I think it's just damage. I don't think they... Okay, cool. Okay, great. It's the... Uh, anything else from, from the Baron? No. The skeletons are uh, alongside the carriage. You and one of the skeletons is uh, on top of the carriage. Um, it just is... a little tear rolls down my cheek, but you can't see it in the rain. <laughs> Goodbye, Vargas. Dis- <laughs> disguised by the rain. <laughs> <laughs> that is very exceptionally anime. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is the wolves' turns, and they are really not doing much now. They're, they're doing that thing where they start circling, um, just the bottom of it looking up, and the howling is becoming more of a whimper at this point. Okay, well, Oh, they've been driven mad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, American? Um, I did say I prepared a spell oh. for when the bubble disappeared. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, go right ahead. Um, saying I was going to try and hold them back. So um, she begins chanting quietly in Elvish, and she is summoning, again, the plants in the area where our um, bubble was and where the revenants currently are to become overgrown and um, slow them down, essentially. Is this just plant growth again, is it? It's just, just good old plant growth. Okay. Okay, great. Right. Right. <laughs> now I'm, try- I'm trying to find like one of the. Uh... Is this just plant growth again? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like enough with the flavor. Uh, mechanically, which spells this? Oh no, I was trying to find the. I was trying to find the little icon for it, and they've got like an oh, icon yeah. for all of the spells except plant growth. So that's great. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, uh, but yeah. I'm gonna be like, grow my children, grow and impede my enemies. Yeah, the, there's like vines and roots from the, the thick Svelich woods that just come start crawling across the road uh, and um, weeds and, and grass grow up out of it and make that entire area of where the bubble was and over to where... Is it right over to where the um, uh, the trench is? Like how big of a... I want it to end basically right before us. Uh, yeah, yeah. So- okay, cool. So filling... Everything that they're into and right up to where you are standing, basically. Is that right? Yeah, you just can, to maximize the Can you just walk right through that stuff? Yes, I can. So I could even make it grow over me and be like, never mind, I'll just walk through that at full movement speed. Is there a sort of um, a size limit that you can do or can you just do whatever the hell you want? 
a size limit for what? Like how many feet of uh, coverage? Oh, yeah, it's a hundred foot in. radius. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, sweet. You just, this thing, do you want to like fill it all up behind them as well? So even no matter which direction they go, it's just completely I, blocked. I don't think I actually have the ability to not do it at a hundred foot. <laughs> right. Oh no, I can, no, actually, never mind. I can exclude one or more areas of any size from being affected, so... Yeah. So do you just want to just paint that entire? Do I road? want to ruin the whole road forever? Maybe. Does oh, it won't be forever. It just until someone comes along with a strimmer. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, American sure. Film, I make it. I make it relatively far in the distance as well. I don't know what? why. I just. I'm just feeling it. From where you're standing, from like right in front of your feet, these g- blades of grass and roots and stuff just grow up from your feet and in a wave just like push back from you all the way down the path through the revenants past and over the trench that you've dug and into and around basically to this corner uh maybe 50 60 uh, to 100 feet away from you um and it grows grows up to maybe two to three foot high filling this path with uh um dangerous terrain how tall is a revenant the revenants uh, are <laughs> think they're like uh, on average human size really so anywhere between five eight to six four depending on which body they've inhabited mm. oh of course yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um so if they chose children that would be a bad choice <laughs> that would be There's only tiny oh actually there. i hope they do that we need to keep killing them until they inhabit the bodies of children so you can then kill the bodies of children no, it's just easier to control. Oh, like keeping oh, the arms reached. Arms <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do the while you're hitting yourself. While you're hitting yeah. yourself. <laughs> uh, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> um, all right, at the top of the order is Baron. You're looking down um, off the top of the carriage and you've seen Mirican just cast this, filling the path with, um, Whoa. with plant growth. All right. Um, let's go. <laughs> How does this, does this thing go? Uh, it does on Mirican's turn, I guess. I guess she yeah. controls the face. So are you oh, doing... that's a good question, actually. We'll, I assume we'll just use their movement on your turn, right? Yeah, th- it says to roll initiative for them as a group, which has its own turns. We can do but that But you could you just like. make it but that way. It and it says they obey any verbal commands that okay. I issue to them. And it doesn't require an action. Okay. Well, would you like, do you want to just use them on your turn? Because if they go now, you're not on the carriage at this point. Um, I thought, thought I would have gotten on the carriage, but I didn't think to specify that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I conjured them to drag the carriage. I kind of assumed yeah, but then I'd you be wanted, in it. But then you wanted to like do a move and stuff. And, and like, so I wasn't I sure. I thought I was on the carriage at the time in my head, but. Was that when I said you were I standing wasn't. on the path and that the growth grew up from your Let's feet? Jump in. in. In my head, I was movement. thinking that I was in the carriage. Okay, well, we can, you, you read your direction. We can say we, you read the last of your movement as well. So you did the spell, you turned That's around. That's generous of you, DM. I mean, I, I just, <laughs> I, it's either that or bicker online about it. So I'd rather let's just move on. <laughs> bicker offline. <laughs> yeah. like you were to say, it's either that or sleep on the couch. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you win the game. <laughs> um, okay, cool. We're, so Baron, you're not just going to, you're not going to do anything. You're just on, on top of that carriage for now. I'm going to um, clutch Patty's lifeless body badly <laughs> and Flip the bird to the revenants. Okay. Okay, you do that. Um, just trying to find room for everyone on the map there. Uh, it's the revenants' turns, and they hack and try and push their way through, and they uh, are spending their entire action trying to dash and only getting as far as they would normally get with standard movement. But it does push them right up to where Mirican was, was standing. Um, but that's that's all they get. Casimir is waiting inside the wagon and is just looking out. Um, I think Casimir is actually going to do something. He looks at the Baron who sort of told him to just hang back. He, he looks out the window to make sure that he's on there. He, he 
um, looks back towards the revenants. Um, and Bill, you see just a um, fire congregating around the hand of Casimir, and he leans out the window, um, and a giant streak of fire just carves from his fingers out towards the revenant. And there is just an, an enormous uh, flash of light as this fireball erupts around uh, the, the revenants. What? I did fireball? He did do fireball. He rolled very well. Um, he rolled 40 damage. Uh, I love this guy. So we're going to... We'll hopefully you, you we'll, can prevent forest fires, Casimir. With um, <laughs> <laughs> it is look, it's raining. I you're into so, there, um, does plant growth yeah. uh, st- uh, inhibit dex, uh, dex saving throws, Joe? I believe it does. No, oh, it doesn't. Well, no, if you're in difficult terrain, does yeah, it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Becomes. I it doesn't specify that it's. But it'll it be just difficult says terrain about the movement. It doesn't say it's difficult terrain. Oh, does um, it? Okay, yeah, well, read it to us, Regan. I don't. I don't have it on me. I thought you had oh, it on you. I can read it. Yeah. Um, if you cast a spell using one action, choose a point within range. All normal plants within a hundred feet become thick and overgrown, and then you click weirdly on D and D Beyond, and it disappears <laughs> and embarrasses you. Okay. Well. That's, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll roll some we'll roll, roll some uh, deck saving throws here just for the revenants as they see this thing streaking towards them. Uh, and they both failed with a roll of an 8 and a 6, so they both take uh, 40 damage um, from Casimir's fireball. Um, which Whoa, is, which that is, is a good roll. Which is pretty huge. Um, they're going to be after you now, Casimir. They're not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's just going to leave him up the mountain and just be like, look, okay, them. you just stay here. You're, you'll be safe here. We'll go back and look after the revenants. Um, Morley, over to you. Yeah, I, I look back at the, the revenants and I, I take my little wizened old hand. No, that sounds like I, my hand's useless. Um, <laughs> I take my, my regular my muscle-bound hand. <laughs> And um, <laughs> I, I cast Crown of Madness Ooh. on on one of them. It's exciting, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've just dropped it in the the chat. Um, one humanoid of your choice that you can see within range must succeed on a Wisdom saving throw, or become charmed by me. The target is charmed in a way. Uh, in this way, a twisted crown of jagged iron appears on its head, and a madness glows in its eyes. I, I probably shouldn't bother reading all this because then you'll just say, "Oh yeah, they say saved." <laughs> um, so you just t- roll, and then I'll tell you what I want them to do. I can. Can I? Can I stop you there? Um, they can't be charmed. So you're. Mm. You, you do your spell. The crown of thorns appears and just sh- just like it shatters o- over the tops of their heads instantly uh, that, I, that was going to be as good as your thing Casimir but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're all learning together uh, I'm just I, don't, gonna say, I don't think anyone's ever tried to charm yeah. any sort of undead creatures yet uh, but with how quickly that snapped away yeah. you, you kind of feel that maybe these kind of things aren't going to work on um, undead creatures. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they're undead. Can't I'll add that to the them. old diary. Uh, cannot oh. be charmed. Thank you, Morley. Uh, no, no worries at all. Thanks for telling me. Give me that heads up as well there, Brian. That would have been great about... <laughs> I thought it was obvious. Oh, three days ago. <laughs> anyway, I'll, uh, I'll park me arse up on the carriage and off we fly. <laughs> you know, I think it was charming, but... <laughs> You, look, you charmed the Baron, okay? It's their personalities, you know, not you. <laughs> <laughs> very, it's not a reflection on you. My very limited spell slots, that was one of them. So <laughs> oh, well, you, got them all, you did get them all refreshed on your, on your long rest, so hopefully that yeah. helps. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mirican, uh, back to you. And the, and the five um, horses. So... 
I can finish reading you plant growth. It just says a creature moving through the area must spend four feet of movement for every one foot it moves. It doesn't say anything about it being difficult terrain. Oh, oh so it's, they couldn't get as far as uh, they thought it's, they could get. Twice, That's good. It's yeah, twice yeah. As bad. That is. So they're still, they're even further back. It's, still, it's going to take them a while to get out. Yeah. And also when Casimir did that, I quickly checked the spell to make sure fire doesn't destroy the effect. Because that would right. be a real, real bummer. No, a spell, a, <laughs> unless unless you are hurt, you're not going to like be, um, it's a concentration spell. It's not going to break your concentration. No, it's, um, plant growth is instantaneous. Oh, okay. But my conjured horses are a concentration spell. Gotcha, gotcha. Is it just I, me, guys? Or are they- I wasn't going to let the plant growth get burnt away anyway. It's a magical thing. I didn't, just didn't really think of it. I'm like, on a, I was thinking to myself, like, Burnt plants still get in your way just as much as <laughs> live plants. <laughs> but um, I'm going to say to everyone, what, what do we do? Are, are we going to try and trap them or are we going to just try and kill them again? I don't Let's want them getting get stronger get and them. stronger. But we wanted to make a, a break for it. We wanted to head to the mountains and then yes. have those idiots follow us up the mountains and then we'll find yes. the crevasse and push, push them in. Push them in the crevasse. Okay, yes. we'll do that. We'll stick them in the ice. Yeah. Has anyone seen yeah. California Man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or Encino Man? Mm, it was also released in America. Yeah. So I thought. <laughs> yes, I have, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine that when they get thawed out in 45,000 million years by Paulie Shore. <laughs> oh, my God. And, oh, they're going to have a time in college or high school or whatever. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a right laugh. American, what are you up to? What are you, what's happening? <laughs> she's, she's listening to the chat about Encino Man mm-hmm. with great wonder in her eyes. And then she calls out, um, run, my beautiful beasts, run! And um, tells the horses to just go running and we can escape at, what do they go? Like 90, 80 feet. 80 feet. And if, they're, and if they're dashing. And there's four of is that dashing speed or is that max? Oh, yeah. If they're just dashing, that'll double it. Yeah. You guys take off. There's, are you guys utilizing the three in front or are you just trying to keep them making sure nothing is going to get in between you and escaping? Mm, it's like a concession of right. war horses with the carriage attached to the one at the end. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yep. Barge those walls <laughs> out of the way. Doof, doof, doof. Okay. Yeah. I was wrong. Their speed is 60 feet, so we're dashing at 120 feet. Okay, cool. Yep. Bill, what was uh, what were you going to say? Um, I'm just going to move up the war horses when it's safe to do so. I like, um, uh, so you From end up riding one onto the other. Cool. Are you trying to get to the front one, or where are you planning to end up? Probably just the second one. Okay. Uh, I will get just a. This one. I will get like a, an athletics because I assume you're doing this while everything's moving, right? Uh, yep. Can I do acrobatics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can. You can do an acrobatics wrong. Because I mean, it's raining. Uh, it's pouring down. That's true, and you're moving is, at 120 seem, feet. Okay. Okay. It seems. Your I said when it's safe to do so. I guess it's not currently oh. safe to do so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're traveling at like 120 feet every six seconds. You're, you're the rain is just pouring down. The horses are wet. You're, you're, everything about you is wet as well. Um, so you can give it a try. You can give it a try. But if you don't feel it, I'm gonna not try it. Okay. Okay. After hearing it, <laughs> I like, of what's going on. I like the idea of Bill like looking out of the carriage, going to do it, seeing kind of the. Uh, no, I'll just sit back in the character where it's dry. I think I'll just. <laughs> I think that's good. Uh, and these, you guys are just Boys. blitzing through um, uh, Svelich Woods at this point. So let's put you back onto the Barovian map. Um, Svelich Woods gonna, is just I'm a gonna, blur um, I'm going to take the time to compliment Casimir on his magical prowess. Uh, you sure had that hidden up your sleeve? Thank you, Mirakin. I've, I've, uh, I've been practicing the arts of spellcasting for... For the majority of my life. That seemed like a good ally to have on board. Um, mm. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> 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 oh, he's such a charmer. He's such a smooth operator. Does he just, does he just go, yes, yes I am. <laughs> 
<laughs> Can we get a height meter for? We need a height <laughs> meter. Um, height train for Casimir, please. Height train for attraction to Casimir drops by fifty percent. Oh. Um, Casimir's game. Um, I've actually been practicing spellcasting for the majority of my life. I'm a really smart guy. <laughs> I actually have a lot to offer if people just notice me. <laughs> no one ever gets to know the real Casimir. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. He's an um, Look, I... I, I he sort of, as you guys are uh, taking off through um, the woods, he talks a bit more about his experience with magic and stuff. Um, and it seems mm-hmm. like he would be surprisingly very similarly um, uh, leveled as, as you guys, as um, in wizardry as well. He's, he's, he's got his own little book that he keeps with him. Is um, he a wizard? He's, you're a wizard. Oh. He, and... He, <laughs> <laughs> you're, where's, you're a wizard, Cassie. You're a wizard. Um, you, you both. The more you talk to him, the more you realize you've yeah, both you're been. A wizard, uh, this while he has taken a lot longer to get to the point where you were at. Uh, it seems to be you're very similarly leveled, and he is in awe of of um, everything uh, that the the way that you have moved forward with each of your skills and your. Um, he, he's really humbled uh, being in your guys' presence. Um, uh, I, I, I knew it was uh, amazing that you were still alive after everything Barovia has chucked your way but to progress the way that you guys have and what has taken me a good 100, 200 years this is I do believe that you are exactly who we need exactly who I need at the Amber Temple well, we've been saying this to a lot of people Casimir but I think uh a lot of people have underestimated us at their peril, I might add. Well, you won't get that from me, Molly. Um, Can we look at your book? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that is probably a bit of a, a bit of interest for for the Baron, actually. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, we'll take our we'll take our break. I think it's a good time to do it. Mm, okay. Well, get the uh, get the hype train going because I've got tiny food. Oh yeah, oh. yeah, we got tiny. Food. I've got tiny big food. Big tiny food. Whoa! Big what? tiny food. Yeah, <laughs> the ultimate combo. Mind equals blown. Is this just going to be the, a regular size carrot? <laughs> uh, well, no, no, it's not. But you would think it might be, judging by the size of its uh, greens. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> all, it was all Classic. show. <laughs> Trim the bush so the uh, the carrot looks bigger. <laughs> Wait, then I like. I thought yeah. just it. holding it far from the camera. <laughs> Been waiting it for so long to pick this baby. Oh, looks delicious. Yeah. What was yeah. The, was the other one? The other one's got like some girth to the greenery. <laughs> the other one has. Well, this one has surprised me. Yeah. Victorian rude guy and, and intimidated me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, to be honest, I didn't want to show this one off on screen. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, exhibit B. Look at how thick that stem is. Look at the size of that stalk. Okay, the stalk guys. is as big as the carrot. <laughs> it's not that big. <laughs> Pretty puny, yeah. if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Adam mm. comparing himself to baby carrots again. Great, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I also ha- I have a um, I have a carrot that I'm growing that I'm calling Project Chode. <laughs> uh, okay, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! Why is this the first I've heard of this? <laughs> Did I only call it that mentally and not tell you that? <laughs> She, she kind of when she talks about it, she kind of just drifts off for a bit. It's weird. <laughs> you're, you're the original project, Joe. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I liked what I liked. <laughs> this is a Popeye reference as well. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, how many vegetables are you guys growing? Because it seems like you harvest like one vegetable every week. <laughs> that sounds about, that's about right. right. That is yeah. about right. Yeah, yeah. that's the level I'm at. 
<laughs> we, we, we're, we're, grow? we're brutally undernourished, by the way. We get one vegetable to share every couple of weeks. <laughs> North Korea yeah. grow the vegetables, farmers. intending on like a like a crop, and like, oh, we're going to cut these carrots up and make a <laughs> carrot stew. You think with that, like you know how much how much we hate cooking and food products, right? Mm, I I sort of planted them with the vague notion that if they grew, it was a bonus. So I didn't have high expectations. It was about but what do you do with them? Yeah. We still eat them. I, well, the good thing about bunnies is even if they turn out horrible, I just feed them to the bunnies, and they love the carrot tops. So it's win win. Oh, mm. classic! What a, a true to form animal. <laughs> 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 I know. I always harass them for being stereotypical when yeah. they eat yeah. carrots. Basic, yeah. bunny. <laughs> bunny. <laughs> so basic. <laughs> yeah. You're supposed to eat your quinoa or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have uh, we have a question of the week from Lap Kiwi. And look, it's topical. It's not about carrots or vegetables, but we've all been talking about it. We were talking about it last week as well. Sorry. How how are we all feeling about the bat winning bird of the year? Oh, come on. Great. <laughs> you should have waited till Adam was here. He well, I didn't would realize have he did. a hot take I, I on didn't that. Realize. He would have a hot take. We can wait. Yeah. I'll thank I'll thank uh so- Mo, Sotmo, and Wacky Angelfish for following us. Thank you so much. We're we're like we're pa- we're moving towards um, 920 followers now. We're getting we're getting up to that point where we're slowly going to we're going to get to that a thousand mark. That a thousand mark is a very exciting moment. I think we'll do a I reckon we'll do a giveaway for a thousand. What do you reckon? We can do a giveaway for a thousand. We're going to give away. Oh, I don't know, like a, like a dice kit or something, something cool, or mm. maybe like a player's handbook or something to someone. That'd be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Or, a, real or a Dungeon Master's just... guide or something. I think something like that would be a really cool giveaway. Let okay, us know. We all got them. Let us maybe maybe some people are really just wanting to give it a go. In the chat, let me know what would make a good giveaway that that could <laughs> You're just going to get some ludicrous hearts. Yeah. You're going to say like ch- chodes, that carrot, the, something like that. Give away your chodes. <laughs> I didn't even get to explain Project Chode. Oh, yeah, you didn't. Sorry, uh, well, sorry. Did you? My, my no, we just hypothesis, ripped into it. My hypothesis is that if I grow a carrot in an extremely shallow pot instead of in a garden yeah. bed, it will mm. make up for and girth what it lacks in length potential. Okay. So that that's what I'm trying, just for fun. Sort of like the cube watermelons. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the Frankenstein <laughs> head watermelons? No. They look fantastic. Growing a melon right. inside like a mold of a Frankenstein head. Is that how oh, so it works like that? Yeah. Yeah. It just grows to that shape. Grow them in zero G. <laughs> yeah. Zero um, by the G way, it was code. it was waffles that was giving us the uh, the question about bird of the bird of the year. So no. I feel great about the bat winning. I support the bat. I've always supported the bat. Yeah. yeah. That's all I, knew I have the bat to say. Will win. Well, see, this was the thing. People are like, the bat was literally always going to win. It was always going. To, it was all about letting know. the bat win, basically. I didn't think people would be open-minded enough to vote for the bat, but New Zealand surprised me. Yeah. How, what do you think, Adam? Bat is bird of the year. What? <laughs> the bat winning bird <laughs> of the year. Yes. What yep, are you thought? What are your thoughts on it? Oh, no, not not good. <laughs> well, I, I really didn't want the bat to win bird of the year. I mean, primarily because it's not a bird. Um, <laughs> the, being then, the main um, thing. Secondly, yeah. why? Because I don't like bats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. This comes out. Well, you're going to say some of your best friends are bats, but... <laughs> no, 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 no. None of, none of my best friends are bats. Um, but then... I've had a late change of heart, and it was actually all down to the photo that Joe shared in the chat this morning of the bat <laughs> with the crowd. And I was like, oh, he's pretty cute. <laughs> he's not a bird, though. No, I know. It's like still fuck him and like shouldn't have won. <laughs> but like <laughs> softened a lot. Like I was going to be like marching to the <laughs> steps of parliament <laughs> with, with my protesters. Like but 50 dead bats. <laughs> throw on their steps can't be in the competition uh, now they're all dead can they 
it's really now they're Jesus. endangered. Isn't that why it's in the competition? Because it's doing so badly. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh. I'm glad you've softened towards the bat. He was, he's a very precious boy, and I, I wish him the best. How many of them are there in New Zealand? Do we know? Four. No idea. Scott, I just want to know how many bullets I need to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Just to get a tennis racket. <laughs> but he, he did that first picture. It did look like a little puppy. <laughs> not the yeah, not the one with the crown, did. but the oh. other one, where someone's holding it in their hand. It's got like a little. Looks like a push a squish nose dog. Yeah, it's got a, a little, little pug. open mouth. Because mm. <laughs> normally they have you see the picture of a bat and it's got a weird like pig nose. They got crazy they noses. Yeah, yeah. Um, is my mic still lagging like really badly? I think, yes. yeah, there is a decent lag, yeah, for sure. All right, I'm just going to restart while we finish up, right? Okay, there's, a, there's another question that we got uh, from Lark. Ooh. You no, know, that was the foolish fool. He, Lark Kiwi did have a question, but it was just reminding me that Waffles asked the last one. Uh, the foolish fool asked Morley. How do you feel about being completely surrounded by full casters instead of uh, like you've only got some abilities to cast mainly a uh, mix and matching? Yeah, well, I'm glad someone has finally thought to ask the question. <laughs> I feel a little bit inadequate, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah. What you? Oh, well, the game isn't built to be like one person being better than the other, right? So there should be a lot of advantages that you have instead, right? Absolutely, but it's like it's just like in real life, right? I'm uh, I'm envious of some things my friends have, even though they probably have problems I don't have, yeah, and I gotcha. have things that they would be envious of. But yeah, in the game, that's true. In the game, I do feel like uh, you guys have so many spell slots and so many options, and I have quite limited mm. spell slots. So when one of my spells doesn't work, it's actually a huge deal, right. and I'm like, well, I've only got one more crack at that. Like, yeah, true, true. Um, I, I'm, I'm, this is what you're saying is why I don't like playing as, uh, like fighters and barbarians and stuff. There's only so much you can do with a sword. Um, you've got, oh, I can hit three times now with the sword or, or do that kind of stuff, but it doesn't have that kind of, uh, flavor to the battle that I personally like having. I like the variety and being able to do cool, fancy shit when I, when I play. Um, mm. so I do. Like yeah, I mean, magic. You, what's that? Sorry. When I first started playing d and I think because it's quite complex and there's lots to remember, mm. and especially if you're playing with like people who play with components, um, there's, a, there's oh. a lot to remember with spells, and I didn't like them at all, so I always picked fighters oh, or right. you know, characters that didn't even need magic. Uh, and this was like the most magical character I've ever played, and even that is like, you know, pathetic compared to like Baron. How, how did they play with components? Is, were they playing a different edition or something? No, like like you need to have certain things on hand to do the spell. What? Oh, right. Who would choose to play that way? Yeah, because they that kind of replace, they replace that for the most part by using like focuses, right? So you don't need a pinch of salt and a thing of her, sprig of herbs and all that kind of stuff. You can just use a focus. It's only the big things like a gem of a thousand gold pieces that really you need to have the item but for all the smaller things you can just fudge it by using your focus basically basically did this dm make them do item management for how many pinches of salt they had left oh my gosh i would never play in that game <laughs> no and, and i only played like a couple of sessions with these people it was a small work group um but my point is that magic is a lot more complicated just mm. generally than whacking someone with a sword mm. yeah mm. yeah um, I mean, like, so we've got some people in the in the chat that are, uh, I think, defending rogues and some of the melee stuff. Like they're, they're saying, like the sixty six uh, sneak attack is is huge and super damaging on top of whatever you do as well. So if you can get that in, if you can find a means to get advantage, that's that's huge for even if you're just yeah. using a, a bow and arrow. To to those people, I just want to say. Yes, there are lots of cool things about this character in class, and that's why I'm playing them. Yeah. But the question was, how do you feel yeah. being surrounded by full magic casters? And I feel, oh, I wish I could do some of those things yeah, sometimes. Cool. 
and I'm sure they look at. I'm sure you guys, you, you'd look at me and go, "I wish we could <laughs> slip over a fucking rock and <laughs> fire a fire a bow into the fucking trees, hitting nothing, and have a spell that fucking fizzles and drips out of your finger and does nothing." You guys look, 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 wish I'll, all those things. Eh? I'll be honest. If you want to stop using roll twenties dice, I completely understand because I feel <laughs> they have been f- rotten, absolutely rotten for you for like the last two years. <laughs> like, yeah, you've. The dice have not been kind at all. But yeah, I it's agree though. This... Especially bad now then if I'm like, okay, cool, I'll switch to using physical dice and I'll just tell you the role. I'm like, well, another nat 20, you reckon? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what the other question from Foolish Fool was, how does it feel as a DM to be DMing a party of just casters and half casters instead of um, instead of a bunch of tanks? Um yeah, it's been interesting. It was definitely something I had to... I, when, when we lost Loris, it was definitely something I was well aware of, of not having someone who was going to be in the front just tanking all the damage. Um, but I don't think it's been a problem at all, actually. I, I was really concerned that it was going to mean a lot of damage happening. But we've got smart people playing, really good strategies happening. And oh, I can't hear you, sorry, uh, Shannon. Nope, you I can't hear microphone you. has yeah. decided to say no. You're going to restart. Okay. He's probably. Uh, it's, it's affected the way we play, though, right? Like, we would have done things differently if we had a big tank up the front. So we've. 100%. We've put in place strategies because we don't have that deliberately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I do think of, like, what would a certain situation have been if Loris was there and, and how would that have played out and how different would things have gone? uh like i i don't see um well i i 100 percent would have seen loris uh running up to strad you know that last encounter uh where the sunblade got um returned i absolutely would have Possibly. seen would have seen uh loris wanting to get into the revenants you know because he, he like you know it's all, a barbarian doesn't mind taking damage they and goliaths really yeah. enjoy <laughs> that fight and the, the damage maybe being done the Revenants would always be after Loris then, and that would be good. That's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Take the pressure off the rest of us. Um, <laughs> there's no way of knowing. No, there's no there's But just no because you play a barbarian or a fighter doesn't mean you're just running recklessly all the time, you know? Yeah, that's true. It means when you decide mm. to fight, you're there to take the front lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was talking about Loris, we- but not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm trying to be <laughs> diplomatic here. Yeah. does the opposite, the opposite of what you expect. That's yeah, true. Yeah. There's no knowing. <laughs> That's true. Expect the unexpected. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's true. Um, Waffles is also... The skeletons have oh, sorry? acted as a bit of a wall. Yeah. The the they've been great. Say. They've been so good. They have absolutely replaced uh, having a sort of spike. tank. Um, you've only got what, three now? Two. And a dead one. Two and a dead one. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I I was expecting you to lose a couple. I didn't expect this many to, to drop off. Didn't you? No, no. I kind of... what You I, can have 10, right? I can have more, more now. More than that. But it, it, it means that I have to definitely spend a certain amount of spells every day to keep them around. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't um, know. I'm... I was going to say, I, the reason I wasn't expecting you to lose so many is I uh, didn't expect you to run from this one. I thought this would have been no, like, you're all refreshed. You're ready just to just uh, wipe out these revenants and then you can just bring your skeletons back to life. But I did kind of like, so w- what I rolled was the wolves showed up at 2.30. Uh, the revenants showed up at about 4.30. Um, so the, the wolves, the first two wolves, because they were... Um, heading as a pack down the path the first two didn't see the trap they didn't see it they fell in the others leapt over and started fighting with the skeletons and the horses they managed to kill the horses before the skeletons killed them on the other side when the revenants showed up one of them um fell in uh and then the other one leapt over helped the other one out eventually like after taking some damage from the skeletons but fighting back it was basically one revenant against three skeletons of which he ended up wiping them out over six rounds i think it was um and then every round he was regenerating so every bit of damage the skeletons were doing he was getting 10 back each round and to which eventually the one behind him 
got assisted out of the trench and they waited until the bubble came down. So it was all that was all what was planned out. That was all dice mm. rolls and sort of talking about what likely would happen uh, using average damages and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was cool. Was this in your prep session? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, did you do the whole thing? Play did it out. In yeah, the prep yeah. Session? Yep, oh, that would have been a great prep session. <laughs> yeah. Certainly for us. But, um, <laughs> yeah. That would have been a good one to watch. Yeah, yeah it was good. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yesterday's prep session Empty. was good. Uh, it was a really good It was a much longer prep stream than I'd normally do, but we got a few, we got quite a few people watching and, and sort of helping out and talking. And yeah, it was great. It was a good one. I wonder where John is now. <laughs> John. I have a feeling. Might be restarting. Oh, here he is. Here we go. That is Good like timing. magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonder where John is. Pink. Um, also, uh, NZ Waffles just wanted to let us know uh, his long overdue reminder that we're all amazing human beings. Uh, he's including everyone in the chat as well. Everyone's awesome, which I totally agree. Everyone's super great. Um, uh, Overcorn says, I'm curious <laughs> for how you change your game for streaming compared to either around a table or just private online game do you feel you have to create more visual content you always seem super relaxed in the game which is really great so it never feels like it's forced um i I don't play in real life (laughs) this is this is basically all i've played i've played in person maybe three times i think and it's always just been theater of the mind no maps no minis no just just uh just the table and the dm and dice well two of those were with me right yeah yeah so I thought, oh, wait, maybe I've played two wow. other games. So four. I played four in person, oh. I think. I oh, he forgot about the one with me, guys. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> completely forget about like no. <laughs> Um No, Adam was a great DM. He, his characters, his NPCs were absolutely fucking perfect. Oh, you perfect. DMing? He was so good. He was so good. Um, it was a homebrew good. world. It, it wasn't very good um, in the sense of story or... Uh, knowledge of the game but i can do a funny voice i guarantee you <laughs> and they and they were very good they were very good um but john john introduced me to um D and he introduced it to me via roll 20 so this is just how i know D D to be played so i guess I'm, I'm quite relaxed and quite natural with just using roll 20 now i don't know about the rest of you guys if you guys play many in-game sessions or if it's all just online I started out playing in person. Mic. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> you go, <Okay>. Adam. <laughs> I started out playing <clears throat> in person, and I def- there are elements of that I really miss, and I really wish we could we could all play in person sometimes. But there are lots of cool things you get with the technology, and it's just so much easier to get a game together. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it's awesome. How about you, Shannon? Do you? Oh, so we'll go to Bill. John, why don't you tell uh, about your sort of gaming? How's my How's my mic? Is it any better, or is it still a bit laggy? I think it's still laggy, but we can we can deal with that. Okay, sorry about that. That's all right. Um, so Shannon introduced me, and we used to play in my apartment uh, once a week um, with some other fighting game players. Hello? how long uh, i think we played for like two or three years it was, it was a long time yeah, it was a long time and then uh but that was in um what's it called D next yeah it was actually the 5e the 5th edition beta ah so 5th edition was about to come out and we were doing the beta so our feedback um created the products that we use today mm. yeah because ken's cleric was op and I put in some feedback. It's the only feedback I put in. It was like, this is... Because Kim is, like, very mechanically minded, you know? So he was, um, like, getting everything out of it he could. And it was it was pretty tough, wasn't it, compared to most of the characters? It, it could High, literally yeah. do everything. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, clerics are underrated. Well, maybe they just suck now after that. But <laughs> you single-handedly claim <laughs> claim the credit for ruining clerics for <laughs> players. Yeah, nobody. I did look online. And nobody plays clerics anymore. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> 
Um, when so yeah, I so we played there and then... Go, John. Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. It's like one of them interviews. Uh, <laughs> yes, go on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so after that, we hadn't played in a while and I really wanted to play a game. Um, and I think we actually played another in-person game with, with a friend of ours who owns a... Um, he runs a like a board game store up in Paraparumu now, Peter. Um, but that oh. kind of stopped, and I was like, I really want, I really want to play D and D again. But I had a young child, and I was like, there's no way I can like take a whole day out, which is basically what mm. we were doing. And so I was like, oh, why don't I just play it on a Monday night um, and see if people will play online? So I basically harass people until they played. And one of those people was, was uh, Reagan, mm. um, who was super keen. Dave was there. Uh, Shannon was there at the start and then took a hiatus. Um, yeah. And, mm. uh, and another friend of ours, Mark. So, mm. so we played for, I think it was probably like a year. We did Storm King's Thunder. Year and a half. Um, yeah. Year and a half. Yeah. And then Mark, we started playing. No, no, no. Monster Hunter Mark. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Great references. Shannon, you go now. Uh, I th- well, I played as a kid, and I played as a cleric and stuff like that, uh, just because my friend's dad had the it, it had the, like the red box and stuff, and then so he would the dad would DM for a while, and I'd be a total dick and die. My friend was really into it. He had all the, like the books, you know, read all the D and D books and everything like that. So I, I got into it, and then I just w- would play with my, my friend because his dad was like this. Would probably be really annoying kids, so Your he would kids. just give us the books, and we just got into it and played it a bunch. But then I didn't play for years, um, but I did get asked to DM two thousand five or something like that, and then. So I made all this stuff, but then we didn't get around to it. Mm. It was I only had second edition then. Uh, but when the fifth edition um, D and D next came around, I brought that stuff out and um, went through that. I mean, it formed the basis of the game we played. We played for a few years, mm. and then I didn't play for ages again. So fun though. Mm. How do you compare um, online, like how we play? versus what you were used to playing like tabletop oh i think it's uh it's pretty similar really because it's you know you can see the map and Mm. it's not like how it used to be it's not like playing over telephone or something well at at one point when we were playing online i used to play over the telephone no i mean like (laughs) you know like the technology's come far enough that it's kind of like playing on a board yeah i see what you're saying yeah yeah um but we used to have like a an iPad, and I would have the map, and I would erase bits so you could see the map underneath that I'd mm. made, and it would show up on the TV. That's cool. And, uh, that was a, a sort of a fun way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, that so. is cool. Just fucking around. Mm. How about you, Joe? You, th- I think this question's kind of aimed a bit for you as well, because it wrapped up with saying like, do you feel you have to create more visual content, and like you're the one player that we've got that created like designed and created snapchat filters mm. for the different seasons of your character as well as making some for um the when we had loris in the group as well yeah that was fun mm. um i like the dress up aspect of it i think you do it in person but you'd have to have buy-in from everyone i would love to play in person with I, this group yeah and, but with mini, minis and maps and just go hard I would, if I was to play on in a real game in person, I'd be like, um, so we are dressing up non-negotiable. Um, I want it to be as cringe as possible. <laughs> yeah. um, it needs to be as cringe as possible. Um, so, <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, that, um, that's how um, I would do it. I, I think it would be so cool for us to find, find a means to get um, like two or three cameras set up to like a little laptop I can have on the side and just get us all in one person's house, set up the cameras, and just go live like we do right now, uh, mm. but with 
us all in the same room with a couple of cameras set up to show a map and different tape um, people sitting around the table and stuff. That would just be uh, that would be fucking amazing if we could do that sometime next yeah. year. I would be I would love that. I don't think we call be... it Project uh, Chode. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, have you oh wait more? i have one more yeah, thing yeah, to yeah. say yeah cool uh uh speaking of buy-in the the few sessions i played in person there were people <laughs> with like very little buy-in mm. and i was looking at yeah. one guy just like checking his email the whole time and i was just like i hate this <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that is so common we were yeah. playing with, remember bill no john we were playing uh with one guy and he would just only speak in memes. Oh, no. <laughs> pretty much. Or, like, Ooh. you also get people that check yeah. your phone all the time and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, if you, I actually find it pretty easy to concentrate on this because totally. I'm actually watching everyone at the same time in this map. There's a lot to yeah. engage me. Mm. If, a lot of the time, if you're playing, you're sort of waiting around and you've just got this map. Tell me so, about the guy who spoke in memes. No. <laughs> what, what man? How do you speak in memes? <laughs> was he like, Nick Mona? <laughs> oh, yeah. Just everything was not like yeah. an original sentence. It was a repeat of a meme oh, no. sentence. Much damage, many well, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just every fucking thing, and I, I don't even know that many memes. You know, it's like difficult to keep up. So that's a that's an old <laughs> meme. That's me. I, I had to go back to try and think of. Anyway, let's get back into it because we've got uh, we've got half an hour. So let's let's <laughs> let's get back into it. <laughs> but I can't even remember him doing anything. In the... Oh. <laughs> Did oh, Shannon, the of the meme. Did Shannon just freeze to run? Oh, no, he's back now. Yeah. Okay. okay. Are you froze? Punished yeah. by the internet gods. <laughs> I was just saying, I only brought it up because I don't mind something, you know, talking to memes or something, but they, I don't remember them doing anything in the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this person says like the fucking best. So, <laughs> can you give me the contact that does? Cool. I want to run a one person team. There's an ideal person to play. Oh, righty there. We've got we've got some awesome <laughs> ones. Right. We've got look at me, I'm the GM now. Uh, and we've got all your castle are belong to us. That's what we've got a couple of suggestions <laughs> in there. That's great. That's awesome. Okay. It wasn't even that good. It wasn't even that good. Um all right, you guys are just tr coursing through uh, the Svalich Woods at the moment, um, and it's it's not too long before you get to a point in the uh, roads where you hit the uh, crossroads where you were originally destined to meet Casimir at uh, 9.30 that morning. Strangely enough, it's basically uh, like 8.45, 9 o'clock in the morning at this point anyway. Um, so you're, you're a day late, but perfectly on time. Um uh, and the carriage continues south, uh, and it's maybe an hour's travel total before you see um, the the trees open up, and you can see the base of uh, the, these hilly mountain ranges. Um, and through the fog, you can see all greenery slowly disappearing. Uh, the higher this mountain, these these hills get, um, slowly being covered in, in blankets of, of snow, um, and the rain starts dissipating um, and being replaced with uh, sleet um, and sort of like kind of just wet wind and, and bits of snow and sleet mixing in the, in the blustery winds um, howling around you. Um, another... We're going to get our rugs on. A, yeah, good point. Persian rug out, outfits from Kathmandu. <laughs> Um, yeah. American, the, Goggles. the Fey horses that you've got, they only lasted an hour, is that correct? Yeah. What is the plan? Because to get to the point uh, where you can no longer travel by cart, uh, Casimir lets you know it's probably another two hours from where that hour was about to run out. So it's going to be another two hours before that we, we wouldn't be able to get any further with horses. Two more hours. Hmm. It's mm -hmm. a lot of spell slots. Mm. <sighs> if only there was someone who could turn into a beast of burden, but it could never be me. Too humiliating. Time after time. I'm 
elegant elf. I should not be subjected to such things. Isn't there another way? You wear it well, though, American. Oh, thank you. Did you? <laughs> was the horse unusually elegant? Did you think? I have never seen a horse with such oh. grace, such movement, mm. power, mm. and dignity. Well, oh, <laughs> dignity. That's that's what I was going for. So maybe I could be persuaded. Does anyone else think about how the horse looked really regal, per chance? I, I was thinking it looked very similar to some horses I've seen in a small port town that were known for their dressage champions. <laughs> I was just thinking, dressage championship. <laughs> oh, right, well, maybe it's not such an odor, odor onerous task after all if you all appreciate the natural grace and beauty of my form as a horse maybe i'll do it after all i call upon the spirits of nature i'm going to turn into a horse uh, the fey horses <laughs> yes. slowly they, they they um slow down bringing the carriage to a halt before the fey horses slowly sort of uh twinkle away into nothingness oh they twinkle i like that oh. Um, American, can you turn into a centaur? <laughs> there are no <laughs> centaurs in D and D ever. I imagine a, a druid would find a, a centaur an affront to nature. <laughs> Should never be. It's what are good prudish. animals for for mountains? Like a uh, like a yak. You could turn into a big yak. Goats. Mm. Yeah, goat. A goat. Uh, an abominable kind of snowman. I think the cart come can't come with us up the mountain. Yeah. The the path. So the we path, don't really need a, a. The path will narrow to a point where the cart will, unfortunately, be, be restricted. Well, right, that's done then. Mm. All right. Mm. Well, we'll keep Do going. Um, what was that? Sorry, Shannon. Do a lot of people come up here, Casimir? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. That's quite perilous. Uh, most people um, don't have the means to equip themselves with enough warm gear to uh, enable the, the trip. Very remote. That too. Not gonna... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, very it's, agreeable. It's, it's also that there's really not much to be had up here. There's, uh, like I said, a day's worth of travel and you're, you're met with um, almost impenetrable... Uh, guard uh, guard towers and, and gates. Wait, how, how, how are we getting in? To get? Yeah. What, what, what will we get out of this? Do you think? Um, at the at the Amber Temple, well, hopefully, I believe we'll get two things. We'll get the the answer to how to remi remove the curse from Strad, and of course, how I can bring my sister back. Did he mention the curse of Strad before, or is this just he just like let that slip now? <laughs> no, <he's laughs> no he, he mentioned he's it. Mentioned this. Did he? I've got it written, got it written that, down here. Not only that, but you've asked that very question before as well. <laughs> yeah, I know. We've asked it like three times. I've got it written down here. Okay. He's, Strad <laughs> made a pact with the Dark Ones mm -hmm. at the Amber Temple. And Casimir Vampire. Yeah. Vampyr gave him immortality, but has trapped him here in Barovia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that was but, ages ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you think that they're still there, Casimir? Is that what we're going? I believe the answer to how to break that curse will lie within the Amber Temple. That was where the pact was right. made. Surely we'll find answers to how to break it there as well. well that's good enough so, for me. Bit of a hunch then, Casimir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know your sister... You know, really you know his sister? Oh. No, I don't know your sister. I know your sister. I, but, Casimir, I, I guess my... Sorry, Bill, you go. Be, be careful, Molly. Uh, oh, yeah. Never never mind me, Casimir. <laughs> I like how we're, like, halfway up the mountain almost, and you're like, should we even be here? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just trying to squeeze <laughs> should, should we just hide the carriage somewhere, given it's not going to make it all the way up anyway? Just park it up and cover it in some some trees, cartoon style. <laughs> well, ha we're going to get a couple more hours or something out of this cart with the yeah. American. We've got we've got two more hours um, to go. Okay. Okay. 
Well, let's let's get on with it. I was going to try and uh, read Casimir's book over his shoulder. You've got like so the amount of travel you've got. You've probably got a total of three hours uh, where you can totally look into his spell book if you like. Um, okay, so maybe we can swap Casimir. You can have a look at mine. My <laughs> handwritten. Um, that would that would be amazing if you don't mind. Yeah, no, go for it. Great. So you you guys this is a good one. You swap uh, books. <laughs> American, you exit the carriage and take, is it warhorse form again? Yeah. It's just an enormous, beautiful mare that is now pulling the carriage, Bill? Can uh, Casimir and Baron be like tween girls of swap journals? They're just like giggling over <laughs> each other's handwriting and spells and stuff. Oh my god, you've got radiant sickness. <laughs> you got fireballs? I wanted that one. <laughs> Where did you get fireballs from? Um, by all means, so what, what's the rules in regards to copying spells? You got to like spend a certain amount of time, right? And and yeah, and money. Yeah. Well, what's, how much time is it? No, oh, I have to look it okay, up. Okay, cool. But it's but, like but, an hour per level. Lib- oh yeah. Like that. Okay, cool. So I'll give you, um, soon, once you reach the bottom of the hill, I'll give you sort of an idea of what you've picked up from, from Casimir. Uh, this is a great way to get an understanding of his capabilities, for sure. Um, right. Yeah, so you spend the next two hours um, reading through, flicking through Casimir's book, him doing the same with yours. Uh, American, you're finding it really hard now to push through the, these, uh, this track. The track itself becoming harder and harder to see, um, and, and it's uphill the entire way as well. Um, every day's leg day right now. Yeah, every every Four legs. every hundred meters or feet. Let's say feet. Every thirty meters, which is a hundred feet, becomes harder and harder um, as snow sort of starts collecting more on the path in front of you, um, and it gets to a point where you naturally feel it's it's coming up to like a, a hairpin curve, but it's it's so narrow now. It's it's uh, not going to be wide enough for um, probably the war horse, let alone um, the carriage that you're pulling. And so you bring the carriage to a stop. Um, Baron, what you've found, you've, you've been flicking through this, this spell book. Um, and you there's a couple of things that really, uh, he's got like magic missile, he's got mage armor, he's got shield, some of the sort of more standard, he's got detect magic in his book as well that you've seen. Uh, Misty step, suggestion. There's a couple that that really um, get your attention. He's got Counterspell. He's got Fireball. He's got Fly. He's got Greater Invisibility. He has Ice Storm. Um, And he's got Cone of Cold. Cone of Cold being like his his best is like level five. You know that that is an impressive spell uh, to have. Cone of Cold. Mm. There's a heck of a lot of good spells there. Fly. I'm particularly interested in Counterspell. It's, uh, it's a pretty good one. Have you come across it before? Uh, I think I've been getting Counterspelled lately. Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I like. I want to give someone else that feeling. Yeah, yeah, give it back to them. I totally understand. Yeah. That, honestly, it feels very good to do. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> talk to the hand. <laughs> of spells yeah it doesn't even have to be your turn it's amazing and can you fly can I fly with the spell with fly yes, yes I could make you fly with the spell oh really oh, you can you touch someone could you make me fly, fly? <laughs> <laughs> overly excited and but <laughs> Casimir, could you make me fly Casimir Casimir smiles and says yes Morley I could I could absolutely make you fly oh my god check him out do you want? Do you want to fly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not right now. <laughs> no, no. Fly to the top of the mountain. <laughs> Catching Bill's eye, Morley. No, right. We're, we've got business, serious business to take care of. Sounds very fantastic, though. I'd love that feeling at some point later. I tell you what. If we need a scout, we could send you up into the sky, Morley. I can do that. Well, we don't need a scout right now, but I mean, if we you know, do... In the, in the future, yeah, if we do... I'm, I'll am i put me hand up for sure. I'll give it a go in game for anything. Think of it as done. I will. <laughs> and you think of me as a friend. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy sometimes just coming up with things on the spot, is it? It's... <laughs> no. <laughs> I, tell, I tell you what, American, you always come up with amazing like casting <laughs> like language to use when you're casting your spells in the heat of the moment. Mm. And it's I'm always in awe of you when you do that. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It's, it's really hard to do. <laughs> from from your positions, um, the the mountain or the hills that are in front of you, off to the east here, um, they climb pretty steadily, but you can still see well past them. So the tops of them aren't blocking the the enormous mountain ranges off behind them. So if if you were to look at the map um, from from where you are, despite the cloud cover, despite all the fog, there is still just a an enormous silhouette of a mountain looming way off to the sort of east south. Um, He's, oh, way down there. Yeah, over the river. Way over. Well, you can't see the river where you are, but you, you can just but, see. Yeah, if you're yeah. looking on the map, it's past the river. Um, and there's, there is while you're looking up there, and you start um, deciding on trekking up through the these hills, um, you do notice for a moment the shadow uh, of an enormous bird briefly just blotting out some of the light overhead. Um, it, but, but it looks like it, it looks small but you know the distance that it is and that it must be enormous compared to how far away it is just like my premonition what i'm not a horse anymore <laughs> yeah no, but did, did you have a premonition about this i had a premonition of a giant bird attacking bill bill oh Got it out for you, Bill. <laughs> I'm gonna um, get low, get as low as I can while we continue moving. <laughs> she just sounded like a. <laughs> oh, that was it was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Give me an attack. We've had a lot of trouble with birds and things in Barovia, and uh, this looks even worse. So. And bats. Mm. Bats <laughs> missed, <laughs> but birds. There's been a lot of birds. Okay, cool. Okay, great. So, <laughs> a lot of birds. <laughs> observation point. from... They're definitely there. I've, mm. I've actually got a 20 intelligence. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, let, let's, let's just get a move on up this before we get to... We freeze to death. <clears throat> yeah. Get eaten, please. Um, from, from here on in, it's going to be a good maybe 10 hours worth of trekking on foot. It is going. Oh. It is going to be incredibly treacherous. The winds and the snow and the temperature—they're uh, going to be very. It's going to be a painful journey. Um, so I hope you're ready for this. I mean, I won't. I've got my ring of warmth. It's fine. <laughs> and you are your warm, you warm weather gear should should hold up pretty well. But it won't stop this from being incredibly difficult. Um, and he starts. Please. Thanks for the pep talk. <laughs> and he starts uh, crunching through the snow, um, and, and he runs up. off, <laughs> <laughs> skipping through with the his, snow with his shorts and tank top on. He's like, I'm fine. Um, he wears a tank top. <laughs> well, he's got the ring of warmth. He doesn't need. <laughs> yeah. He Let doesn't me think what the hype clothing. train's doing. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to Booty sex shorts. him up a little bit. I'm trying to sex him up a little bit for the, for the viewers. <laughs> you know, you know, he can cast Bill fireball. Jandles. He can. He's got little booty shorts on. He's yeah. great. <laughs> he's There's a mesh blowing <laughs> in the blizzard behind him. <laughs> um, it's 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 maybe um, half an hour, an hour up uh, this pass. We, where the wind really starts um, picking up um, to a point where it's probably if you were to try shooting an arrow in this wind it's going to be it's going to be much harder anything any kind of ranged weapon attack is going to suffer in the weather that um, this pass is imposing on you anything that might require hearing 
uh, as a to check as a check will probably be at disadvantage as well due to the the howling winds picking up and the and the sound whipping around you um, despite the warm weather gear you are still feeling some of your extremities is getting a bit cooler um, and at points a lot of you do stop just to keep your fingers and uh, from, from going numb um, there's the the wind uh, I'd say as well just so you guys are aware the, the, the strength of the winds um, would probably also extinguish any kind of open flames it would disperse any kind of fog or, or mist and would make flying by any non-magical means almost impossible almost well, depending on who you are or what you are like if you like you're a giant bird of prey intent on murder it probably <laughs> wouldn't stop you for example oh, well, those those wings can really catch the catch the breeze pretty well yeah they'll probably <laughs> fuck them up but a little were raven well, probably not so well in these kind of winds right unless they were going the direction of the wind that would probably help them quite a bit I think. <laughs> although Kessimir they would arrive fly. frozen solid Casimir could fly. He's got he's got magical means of flight, so that could totally work. So magical mm-hmm. means would absolutely work. Um, we, no, sorry. Ask. Could I just say to everybody, could you please do me a favor and keep your eyes out for any corpses that you might see frozen in the on the path, and just in case anyone's tried to come up here and they've perished. Just let me know if you see any. Okay. Okay, great. Morbid, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> or if you happen to die yourself, let me know. And <laughs> oh, you'll know. Um. I'm Snowbly. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, the precipitation as you climb gets just heavier and heavier, and we're at a point now that um, any kind of perception check that would rely on sight too would also be at a disadvantage. Um, so we're getting to like it is bl- it is icy. It's like icy needles at your skin at this point coming at you. The wind is is making it hard to stay on your feet. You can barely see the person um, leading the group. So let's say, whoever's at the back, you you probably can't see the person at the front at this point. It is so hard to see. It's so blinding. You're trusting. You're putting the trust of the person in front of you. Um, uh, all of your trust in the person in front of you. The person leading the group at this point is Casimir. Um, I trust him. We should use the buddy system. Um, use a rope. Maybe we should tie each other together with ropes. Then, if you want to, I don't know. I don't know if you're talking to me or the group. No one was like. <laughs> Forget about it. Let's just get is going. That for, is that for climbing the mountain or? I think I was no, confused because it just sounded like yes, you were kind of like. <laughs> I we'd have to yell to hear each other, right? Yeah, yeah, you would. So I'm gonna did did. Bear and Byram yell that to the group, or is he just sort of muttering yeah. that to himself? No, he's yelling. Well, just make sure you keep an eye on each other. Maybe we should connect each other with ropes, a series of ropes and pulleys. <laughs> pulleys as well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to yell back, Good idea, Brian! I'm going to halt and try and anyway. grab some yeah. ropes Casimir's, out of my pack. Casimir stops. What's the kind of order at the at the moment? With Casimir at the front, what would you what would we see that um, single file of adventurers be? Uh, I'm in the middle. I'll be in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle. <laughs> Everyone's in the middle. I'm behind Casimir. Okay. I'm second. Okay. Uh, looks like I'm last. Okay, Molly's at the back. That's good. Oh, oh, nice. I'm going to drink there, Molly. Ah. Um, right. And then we've Can got do, Bill, do we... <laughs> Bill and Shannon, uh, Bill and the Baron in the middle, because they both wanted to be in the middle. They're both, there they go. Perfect. Um, yeah, um, Casimir feels your, uh, you stop, American, that you, you, uh, your hand on his back pulls him to a stop as well. Uh, is, what's happening? What's, what are we doing? Should we tie each other together? 
It's, uh, we're only a few hours in. We're not even halfway. What's, what are we doing? We're tying each other? What? He's trying to yell, <laughs> yell over the wind. Just he's in like, case he's trying did. to get close to American, trying to hear what you're saying. It's a, it's a mountain climbing thing, Casimir. Brian said we should do it. He's got an intelligence of 20. And the, I read it in a book. <laughs> and with the snow whipping past him, he's just nodding, um, nodding at you, trying, to, squinting to try to hear you better. Yes, let's let's do that. Let's tie let's tie ourselves to each other for safety. Has anyone okay. seen yeah, Cliffhanger? It's <laughs> <laughs> yes, like Cliffhanger. Has anyone Fifth. seen Encino Man? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! We better get a move on before those revenants catch us. By the way, is there any Brian? Yes. Brian! What? Is there any what? danger to tying ourselves together? Like, if someone falls down a crevasse, won't they take all of us down? That's true, but we... Well, it depends. I think they <laughs> are. Has, any, has anyone got a pickaxe of any kind? I could have that, and as the last man, I could dig the pickaxe in if I feel us start to get pulled down. Yes, if everyone gets pulled off the mountain, apart from you, put your pickaxe in the ground. <laughs> I haven't got a pickaxe. I'm asking oh. anyone who's got one. No, ask I'm sorry, Casimir. I don't. Ask Casimir if he's got what an axe. What are they talking the about back there? <laughs> I don't know. We didn't bring equipment and then we're asking if we've got equipment that we clearly didn't plan to bring. What's happening with the rope? I think Molly's delusional. Rope. What's happening with the rope? I'm, axe. Going, I'm passing axe. the rope along. I'm just going to... No, just shush. Gonna, Start tying ropes to people. Yeah, we need about ten or fifteen feet of rope between people, I think. And Casimir is uh, like motioning towards like everyone. Everyone's tie. We're using a rope. Yes. Uh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> connect, connect, Casimir. Would you? Uh, you Casimir, Casimir starts tying the rope around his waist and, and securing that to his, his waist. Okay, just okay. Let's go. Yeah, we we do the rope thing quickly, and we (laughs) continue without talking about the rope anymore. Oh no! no. Yeah, when when you bring (laughs) ropes into D and D, nightmare. Nightmare. Cold, numbing fingers all get to work one by one, tying each other to this to this thing. So you've got like this uh, line of you all connected to this rope now. Casimir nods and says, "Are you all set? We can we continue now?" You don't have an axe, no one's... <laughs> What's Molly mouthing back there? Axe! <laughs> you got an axe? And he's got, he holds up his dagger. He's like, this is all I've got, just the dagger. Oh, I wish I had an axe. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he... <laughs> Why would he have one? He's up and down this thing every week, what is it? <laughs> is he? <laughs> <laughs> um, you continue uh, you continue on your journey through this uh, through the wind and the snow uh, you're getting to a point where the where the um, the path really narrows off and, and one side of it is a sheer cliff uh, on your right is a sheer cliff up and on your left is a sheer drop down um, to the north and you can through the through the sleet and the snow and the wind, you can see just a silhouette of the darkness of uh, the Svalich woods over way off in the distance there. Um, but it's getting pretty perilous. I want to get a, a what is going to be the best role for this one? Um, something that uses something that uses decks, I guess. Is that acrobatics or is that athletics? It's acrobatics, isn't it? So I'm going to get an acrobatics roll uh, from from everybody. I'm so glad we're all tied together. <laughs> we're all going to go down. <laughs> one go. I've rolled a three plus four, a four plus three rather. For seven, so that's looking good. We've got some bad rolls happening right now. I rolled a two plus a two, four. Uh, Casimir rolled a total of thirteen. Uh, 
Mine's a 14. I haven't updated my profession. Oh, oh, true. Yeah, my yeah, one would probably be... Mm, I don't know. Yeah, yours would be an 8 instead, uh, Joe, I think. Um, and Adam with a 16 with the, with the highest... Only if, you're, only if you're proficient. True, yeah. Uh, ah, right. Adam with the highest score, uh, roll of 16 there. Um, Casimir at the front is, is, is managing to, to hold his ground. Um, Mirican right behind Casimir. You, you uh, lose a bit of footing just with the wind at one point. Um, and Casimir can feel that slacking of the rope. Uh, behind him like you're falling kind of forward with the wind um and he feels that slack and turns just to put an arm across your front just to make sure you stay safe um bill uh with the roll of 13, 14 you're also uh keeping pretty steady ground um which is good because the baron uh with his just with the he's look he's got an intelligence of 20 but the, you can't see very well at this point. <laughs> the wind is making him a little disoriented. Um, and you too just feel a bit of slack on the on the rope. Just to turn to see him, um, his silhouette, moving really close to what you know to be the edge. And you grab onto the rope and just give it a pull and pull him back more towards you and away from the edge of the cliff. Baron, you yeah. see you see like your foot just what for a moment, doing? just before it pulls, you see like the the wind clears a bit of snow from in front sleep from in front of your eyes, and you can see for a moment just this sheer drop down that you were about to take a step into. Um, Morley taking oh. up the back, you see that as well. And at the same time that Bill pulls on that rope, just grab Baron and just pull him against the the, the cliff to his right. Just holding him secure. Baron! Watch out, man! You're almost went down the, the, the edge there! He goes! <laughs> you saved my life! <laughs> look, at look how steep it is! It was so nothing! It was um, <laughs> it's, it's another hour of travel. There's like 30 minutes of traveling against this sheer drop in front of you. After almost dropping or almost having some sort of accident involving that cliff, there's a few of you that are hugging that cliffside a bit more than the others. Uh, it winds around this cliff and you can see it level out and only to be find yourself eventually within this uh, cliffs each side of you going up. You're in this kind of snowy crevasse at the moment. The wind is dying down a little bit. It seems to be avoiding this section. And um, Casimir comes to a stop, and uh, he points down at the snow American, turns around, and says, "There's footprints. There's footprints there." And American, you can footprints? see, you can see that um, this craggy road that's winding through these mountains at the moment. You too can now see uh, some footprints in the snow, leading behind this jagged rock formation off on the side of the road. Footprints. They must be fresh, with all of this coming down. I'm going to inspect them. Can I roll a survival check? Uh, to see if I can ascertain the type? Yeah, yeah, please do. Please do. The plot thickens. Ooh, I've rolled a 16 plus 7 for 23. Um, that's a, an incredibly good roll. You... The more that you inspect them, the more you see that they look to be possibly um, multiple people um, that are, that is uh, human-sized footprints um, that were leading behind the uh, behind this rock. Maybe two or three people. Um, now the wind is definitely calmer in this area due to the tunnel. Like the wind is going over um, the hills or the mountain range that you are now within. So it's possible with the roll like that, you sort of ascertain that it, they may not be hugely fresh. It could have just been preserved in this area. You're noticing not a lot of snow falling here as well, thanks to the wind pushing it past. So there's a little bit, this, these could be anywhere between um, eight to 12 hours old, these footprints. Oh. My. So they're going behind a rock. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm going to um, halt and pass it on to everyone because I think as a group we probably didn't expect to see anyone up here. 
because we were told how difficult it was and how no one really goes up here, I think. So this seems significant. Going to be like, maybe we're going to encounter some unexpected guests. And that's a great. That is a that is a great time to call it there. I was. That is a great time to end this stream. Perfect Masterful. line. Perfect line for the podcast music to just kick into it with. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, that, guys. That was great. What a session. Wow, we we actually started going up the mountain. Yeah, We're actually in the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool to be in like a different environment, like like an inhospitable mountain. Instead of an inhos- inhospitable woods, uh, <laughs> yeah. church, yeah. In Inhos- village. Inhospitable town, inhospitable <laughs> yeah. church. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, I'm well. going to jump off. Okay, all right, man. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for the session, everybody. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm really digging the feel of, of this this area. This is great. I like everyone sort of like raising their voice and trying to call over each uh, each other and the wind and the <laughs> stuff as well. That was awesome. <laughs> mm, and Cassie, well, it turns out he's right. powerful. Yeah, that was a good yeah. call. That was a good call. Mm. Mm-hmm. I thought I was being like a dick and then almost fell off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it was good use of good use of rope finally in a D and D session. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Um, we've got a couple of comments. Uh, Lapke, we said a few sessions back, I was wondering if you'd ever make it to this location <laughs> because you guys were right there. You picked up Casimir and then it was like, yeah. look, it's good to see you, but we're off. We're going somewhere else. Uh, Foolish Fool says... Patience gr- is a virtue. <laughs> yeah. Foolish Fool says, great session. Good job. NZ Waffles, great session, everyone. I agree. I thought that was a really, really cool session. I think a lot of awesome stuff happened that session. I'm, I love this area. There's a, there's a few... Uh, differences between what we're going to be playing through and what's in the book, uh, thanks to just some some uh, modifications that the D and D community have made for this for this module. Oh. Because mm. the book sucks at this section. Oh. <laughs> the, oh. <laughs> the book is just there's a couple of points wow. where the book is really lacking, and I I don't want to add stuff unless it's necessary. <clears throat> the book is so lacking in in this whole area. Mm. So, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just a, it's, yeah, it's meant to be like this big journey. And then the book's like, you leave the bottom of the mountain and you, and then this happens and then that's, that's it. So I was just helping mm. flesh it out a bit more, make it feel a bit more treacherous and alive and, and um, scary to have be you on. added these feet? I'm not going to tell you what I have and haven't added. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess you're saying you sort of, you know, better than Wizards of the Coast. Not me, not me. <laughs> I'm trusting, I'm trusting community feedback. I'm trusting, but I think yeah. I but yeah. yes to answer you yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, there's like there's 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 been a, there's a few things in the book that I'm like that is not going to happen how they've written it. If it happened, I think you guys would just be so unhappy with certain things. So yeah, this seems like a cool area with lots of opportunities to feel quite different from the things that we've played through before because the setting is so different. So mm, mm. I'm hoping that. This is a fresh challenge, not just like more of the same. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, good. I think that's that's fair. Yeah, like I, I'm just thinking now, Casimir. Do, wouldn't it have been easier to come from the east? Um, <laughs> there's, like there's no straight up onto the mountain instead of all this fucking. There's no green paths. Mountain. There's no paths up the mountain. You would literally have to just do full on mountaineering for like a day oh, and a is half this like a path yeah you, you're going through like what's called solenska pass he mentioned that once i see um so this is a specific i don't know how pathway. you're getting so much out of the map it's shit I'm right barely the... understanding what i'm looking okay, at. okay I'll, I'll draw on the map let's just bring the map up for the viewers as well the, this was something that i just flown up here this is <laughs> this was <laughs> this was something i really struggled with um but i'll draw it on helicoptered in um <laughs> The path goes, I'm just drawing it. It'll take some time for me to, oops. So that's kind of where the path goes. Yeah. It's re- ah. it's really hard to see, but it is it is there. I'm not even seeing, what are you drawing? I'm not seeing a single thing. I'm drawing on the Black map. Line. Oh, wait, it's so small. I have to zoom in. Okay. Well, don't say that out loud. 
<laughs> uh, it's from no, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of this. <laughs> uh, okay. But yeah, so that's <laughs> <laughs> there are no, <laughs> there are there's way better maps that show the actual part. Uh, honestly, if I had looked into the maps more when we first started this, I probably wouldn't use the in this map. I probably would have used one of the fan created ones because they oh. they sell the idea of scale so much better in height and stuff. This doesn't really right. sell that to me. That well, uh, is there like no shading in this one? Really? Yeah, there's there's nothing. I'll I'll um I'll see if there's a there's a certain map that I found. I think I mean I think it's a good map personally, but I guess there's better ones. Yeah, I think it's just the fact that there are better ones. There's like an amazing uh, table that someone's like cut out of wood, and it just looks fucking amazing. Oh, I think I've seen that. Put it in the Discord. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking for it, and I'll bring it up. Um, and I think Table someone else is the yeah <laughs> revolutionary. Sounds, sounds amazing. You know how to sell it. <laughs> um, I've chucked it up in uh, for the viewers to, to have a look at, and I'll just put a link in uh, the video ninja chat there. So if you should be able to click that and take a look, but like that really helps sell the scale of how big these mountains are and how deep uh, into the recesses of like the land all like Barovia and Velaki and stuff where they're located. I just think that's a great, I think that's such an awesome um, physicalized version of the map. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of mountains on that. You can see how many much more mountainous than it looks. On yeah. Yeah. Current map. So I, when I first looked at the one uh, that came with the module, it, I just don't get that feeling of height from it. Like at all. But all these little arrows mm. that sort of point that they're like uh, ridges of arrows, you meant to yeah. insinuate that they point towards down. Yeah, I, I mean, I get that height. I thing. just I just don't like it. I... Where is this map that you've posted? Sorry. In the chat for in video. So what we're doing. Our... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you click the little chat button, in it's the in there. So you have to copy and paste it. Oh, really? Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> But yeah, I just, I love it. You, because like when we first think... left the Barovian village, if you look at that on the, um, you know, on the right there, that trek up the mountainside uh, and then sort of dipping down to the uh, Vistani ch uh, camp by the river and how it sort of goes really high up to that bridge that you crossed and the mm, crossroads yeah, where you Yeah, that part was met. difficult to Yeah, imagine. yeah. So I don't know. I just, I feel like I needed this that. This map they made is tiny. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. Uh, but it would have been great to have as like an extra just to help me uh, set the scene for you guys. Because I, I couldn't get it that well looking at just this map. This is not a table made of wood either, just to let you know. Okay. I mean, ma <laughs> I mean map made of wood. <laughs> right. I, it's made of foam, fine. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're probably right. When I first Either saw way, it, I thought it, was, it's cool. thought it was wood. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking forward to a table made of wood. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so exciting. I think I feel like I should get like we should get a hype train meter for each NPC we NPC we meet, and see how if we can get the hype meter going up for them or not. <laughs> I think I might need to explain <laughs> hype trains a bit better um, at some point. What I thought no was, no you did a please fabulous don't, job. Please don't please <laughs> don't. I don't want to hear anymore. What I find awesome is that both Carl Zone and Random Origins. I don't think anyone else just those two have got like a little icon next to their name which says current hype train conductor <laughs> oh. just, yeah there we go and yet they didn't make the graphic a train mm. oh no there's a, the icon is a train they get a little train icon which is the great icon is a train wow. yeah. they're um, giving mixed metaphors but yeah so like Kiwi mentioned you know the the rock that the that castle ravenloft is on and this got mentioned very, very, like maybe three episodes into our campaign, that behind the Velaki Church was like a mountain or a cliff that was scaled like a thousand feet with Ravenloft above it, looking down over the village of Bar Barovia. But I think that's the only time we've ever really talked about how of that castle looking down over the land and and mm. yeah. So it's just, 
I don't think I've done a very good job because I don't think I personally had the right visual tools to be able to tell it. So. I, is that in I the very like... top right? Uh, yeah, yeah. When, very top when... right. Okay. Oh, not not very top right. Top right. It's kind of center right. You've got like the village of Barovia oh, okay. yeah. and then sort of get... up and west from that. Yeah. When we were at that original Vistani camp with the accordion yeah. and the horses and that sort of stuff, that was kind of directly below Castle Ravenloft, right? Yeah, yeah. And I remember you talking about looking up at the the cliff face. Yeah. There. Um and I think Morley had like he pointed his crossbow. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Up at it to like get get the castle in his in the sights. That's I've right. always imagined it as quite a sheer kind of cliff face and quite high up. Yeah. From from where Like a Mungaraki. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something so, for our international viewers to look it up it. look it up <laughs> try spelling it <laughs> you won't just try, it try pronouncing you it you do find it um but yeah so where you guys met with um uh where you guys got back the sunblade you're effectively about the same height as castle ravenloft at that point give or take it's pretty very similar you're at the really kind of high up at that point uh, and that's why it's like been traveling from that point back down the hills and stuffed into Velaki. And but I don't know. I've I felt like I haven't really sold it that well. I but. mean, honestly, you can't just constantly be telling us the altitude we're at. We're already <laughs> slow enough as as it is. Like, what if Molly checks his altimeter? 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 <laughs> I don't know. Oculus Rift. That's the answer. It's... We should all get an Oculus. <laughs> hey, there's the huge. Yeah. Except for yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I like those an AR play field where we could all be in different yeah rooms, but see the same thing. That'd be cool. Yeah, it would be cool. Mm. But I like I said, if we could get everyone uh, together and we could hook up some webcams and do a session from someone's house, I think that'd be so cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that was definitely have, something um... I'd love to do next next year. See, I have a projector that's ceiling mounted, so I can do things on my sewing table mm. i think it would be cool to like hook up a computer to project a mat down onto the table yeah um, yeah that'd be great. it would be a bit of work to set up I'm very cramped but it should be okay i mean you could move stuff that, out of the way i'm getting that light form projector which still hasn't oh, showed yeah. up because they're on shortages but i don't think you can oh yeah, maybe you can but uh, yeah it can project onto a shape you know like you could have oh, this cool think this map that someone's made and it would just mm. be blank and then you could like project animated rivers on it and oh shit that'd be so cool things like oh, that'd be cool awesome. yeah i've seen um people using uh uh tvs set into tables and then having animated maps running on them and stuff like that with grids and yep. everything that would yeah that'd be so that'd be yeah. so cool that'd be so cool yeah um all right i think that's about it what i will do is i will thank uh all of our wonderful people who support us every single week uh we've got our patreons uh patrons which is qsd drop shadow waffles carl zone squished sador the foolish fool andrew mitchell moore david marsh and our very own joe john and adam thank you very guys very much for the support with patreon uh and then we've got our twitch subscribers <laughs> a low giver random origins garman dude coolios uh, squished waffles, foolish fool, Carl Zone, Dark on Dod, Hoji the Elder, Terrestrial Starfish, Jackalope, and I don't have the names, but there'll be five more that I believe Random gifted them out to. So that's oh. uh, fantastic. Um, but you would have noticed there's a few names that keep popping up there. We've got Carl Zone, we've got Squished, we've got Waffles, we've got Foolish Fool. Uh, I believe that's it. The, f- the four people that like support us on both Patreon and uh, and on twitch you guys are fantastic also reptar dino just subscribed just subscribed yeah. he obviously loved what they saw thank you so much for that support you get a little bit of this you get always get like the little dance you get a little dance that says basically we're dancing monkeys if you subscribe which is great yes but you also well, now i'm not doing it anymore <laughs> <laughs> we have to we've been doing it since day one 
Um, Had enough of turning into animals for other people's amusement. <laughs> we do have a Discord where uh, people who are subscribed or uh, are patrons do have access to a few extra channels where they can get a little bit more behind the scenes sort of stuff. So definitely come and join us in the Discord because it's a pretty active Discord. It's a very cool place filled with incredibly fun people to chat to. Uh, we've got all of our previous sessions on YouTube uh, or podcast, wherever that's available. Um, if you want, I don't have a link for you, but there's a New Zealand Podcast Awards. I think there's like four more days worth of voting. You can vote for us on the New Zealand Podcast Awards for listener favorite. So you can just put put us in there. Put us in there and go for it. That'd be great. We'd love the support. Um, but yeah, come talk to us on you know, Discord. I think that'd be great. You, you know what we should do for our for our Patreons, patrons. What's that? Pat, Patreon folk. We should like we should play our origin stories as normal. But we should only make the video available to Patreon. Origin stories only for the patrons. Okay, you know what? And I can upload. I can upload it to Twitch um, and make it available for uh, um, Twitch subscribers only as well. So if you're a if you're a subscriber, we can even we can even play it to, uh, to a subscriber only audience as well. So we can go live like normal. We can do subscriber only. Make it available to Does the patrons. That only five people see it. Well, no, we've got like 15 subscribers right now. Got so, 15? Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, more, more, maybe 16 at the moment, thanks to tonight. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. we could do that and then we make it available to the patrons as well. And they can, it can just be something special for them. I think that's great. Maybe a staggered thing or something, yeah. We'll give them like a month of, of, of it or something like that. Just forever. Yeah. Just don't let anyone see else it. see it. It's, it's yeah. like, protect, like jealously guard our art. I think don't, that's how art flourishes. Don't share it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think that'd be. I think that's a cool idea. I think we should definitely do something like that. Um, thank you guys for the support. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. You guys did great as well. Thank you for being awesome, awesome players every week. <laughs> and I need a I need a button on my like uh, stream deck so I can just go. St- Cut straight to Joe, full screen <laughs> in the yellow car. Orange car? Yellow car. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>